I do have copies of the presentation for today as well up here. Uh, I can certainly pass them out if anybody would like one. Uh, don't want to take too much time. Here you go. Thank you everybody for uh, the time today. My name is David Gonzalez with the York County <coughs> Econo uh, Economic Alliance. Uh, wanted to chat a little bit about uh, some updates for the uh, Trail Towns program, uh, more specifically the Trail Friendly Business Program, um, a uh, bloom, a micro grant uh, called the Yoko Bloom Trail Towns Edition, and then also some general YCA updates. Uh, so really quick, yeah, apologies for my back uh, to anybody. Uh, for the uh, Trail Town Friendly Business Program, on, I'm on page three. I uh, want to give a quick update about what the Trail Town Friendly Business Program really is. And then additionally, a crash course on the Trail Towns Program. Uh, the Trail Towns Program is a collaborative effort uh, to leverage communities' access to the rail trail. Um, it's a platform to drive economic development. We developed uh, the Trail Towns Program uh, in late 2019 um, for a local uh, concept of it. Uh, where we came together before this body and the four other uh, communities along the uh, Heritage Rail Trail as uh, inaugural communities uh, to bring to life the uh, a network that made that leveraged the uh, Heritage Rail Trail as a trail towns network. Um, so this was all an effort to ensure users knew about the great businesses, services, and amenities all throughout uh, the Heritage Rail Trail communities. As the data in slide three kind of indicates, it's that there's a lot of economic opportunity when it comes to our trails. Uh, it hasn't been fully leveraged to, to date, and uh, we want to build off of a trend that where the outdoor economy, think hiking, think camping, biking, um, things of that nature, are bringing people outdoors, but there's a lot of dollars left on the table uh, when it comes to fully promoting ourselves. And as the data says on the profile side, 43% um, of users are bikers, 28%, and also 28% uh, are walkers, hikers. Uh, there are 11% who actually run the trail. Uh, this is based off of 2017 data, but as we saw last year, uh, use of our parks and our trail systems spiked by 200%. It's due to the pandemic, but it's shown unprecedented use and unprecedented uh, want and demand to engage in the outdoors. Uh, so we're, we're excited about that, and there were uh, 263,000 annual visits in 2017, but we venture to see that that number is only going to increase as we go on. Um, given the proximity of the Heritage Rail Trail to uh, a large community, it's about 4 million people live within 50 miles of a rail trail, and the average uh, $4.5 million in spending annually. Um, another stat there is 14 per person spent on food or drink, and that's that's pretty daily. For any time a trail user comes and uses the trail, they're spending about $14, $14 a day. Um, so we want to make sure that those money uh, doesn't go unused, and then when someone does visit our community, the communities, they know what's, what services are available, what amenities are there, and again, that they are spending the dollars here. Uh, moving on to slide four, um, the Trail Friendly Business Program, uh, we wanted to enter here into this opportunity. After we uh, launched the Trail Towns Program last year, it launched in May of 2021 this year um, for, the Trail Towns Pro for the Trail Friendly Business Program itself. Uh, we have our first business, and we're proud to say that it is a new freedom business, Gil Ice. Um, and we have nine applications to date that our team is sorting through in the coming days to shape our first cohort of uh, trail-friendly businesses. Um, along with that, we host uh, workshops, um, five 
uh, cover uh, that are recorded on our website as of right now. Uh, five are focused on trail towns and the economy around them. And then additionally, there's two others that share details on about how to be a trail friendly business. And as I kind of note on the slides here, uh, the initiative is really to encourage and leverage the trail traffic within our communities. Again, uh, YCA isn't just leaving businesses high in the dry. We're providing some guidelines, best practices for businesses to market and attract their trail users um, to come into their business. And then also, uh, we're providing applicable uh, technical assistance and, as I mentioned earlier, workshops. Uh, on to the fifth slide. <coughs> and this gives a brief synopsis of what a trail friendly business, what it means and what the benefits are as we see it, as of right now. And again, we definitely see an opportunity to develop this program further in the years to come. Uh, but this is just a quick benefit of it. Um, while it's not a requirement and it's not something we're, we're pushing, we want to make sure that businesses feel the benefit of what it means to be a York County Economic Alliance membership. Um, so we are offering one year membership to the YCEA as well. Um, and, yep. and, um, and that it comes along with the benefits of the York County Economic Alliance. For a quick reference for the York County Economic Alliance, it's the county's Chamber of Commerce, Economic Development Corporation. Um, pretty much we're just in it to grow business here in York County and help and help our long-term development. Enough of that. <laughs> Moving towards the other uh, tangible benefits of what it means to be a business program, uh, be a part of the business program, is uh, we're offering window clings, advertisements. Also, we're posting any business that's certified through this program to be based on our website. So uh, indicating that on, along the trail, we'll eventually have this network um, that a trail user can get an idea of what's located in New Freedom, what's located, what businesses are located in Glen, in Glen Rock, and they can access, access that all to a link to our website. So say it's like a QR code or anything else of that nature, if they visit the website, they can get an idea about what the businesses are that are located in this community. If they're looking for a bite to eat, if they're looking for a gym, if they're looking for a coffee shop, an ice cream shop, anything like that. You know, the opportunities are right there. Um, in addition, uh, we'll do periodic promotions of our trail towns and our businesses and our communication platforms, think social media mostly. Um, we're, we're hoping to do periodic uh, advertisements of those businesses too. Um, we're, we're looking to develop networking opportunities. This will be in partnership with our action teams that are installed in each, each of the Heritage Real Show communities. And then additionally, uh, additional promotional material that businesses can leverage, we'll hand them their logos. They can use it on their website, they can use it on their social media, they can use it in any kind of brochures they hand out. There will be opportunities for that too. Uh, we will, we have a development, I didn't bring that today, but I have a whole host of other material as well. Uh, we have Trail Towns brochures um, that pretty much indicate what it is to do with the, each of those Trail Towns and the advertisement there too. We anticipate bringing those to each of the municipal buildings, uh, the businesses that are certified, nonprofits in the area, and a lot of our travel and local amenities partners as well, so that um, anybody who's stopping by a specific amenity or a specific business can get an idea about what's here located just in a handy brochure. Uh, I already mentioned the trainings and workshops that we intend to do. Uh, the technical assistance, I want to dive into a little bit of that a little bit more. Uh, we would offer assistance to trail-friendly trail -friendly business program uh, participants uh, for marketing, promotion, event coordination, and local government, um, local government relationships as well as needed. Pretty much if there's a business that's having a struggle uh, with specific guide, with specifics uh, that I just listed, uh, we're there to provide some counsel as well. Um, especially in the first year when they are a member of the YCEA, a courtesy member of the YCEA, we would definitely uh, leverage our, uh, our resources to support them too. And then uh, financing and grant assistance, uh, we're often the county's agent to help out with financing and grant opportunities so we can help businesses walk through and sort through those. Uh, we can also, in short, help flag some opportunities too that come about. Heading to the next slide, slide six. Um, this gives a good idea of eligibility for the Trail Friendly Business Program. I don't think I mentioned it at the top of the program, but it's a free program, um, and how we're all able to offer it free at this point is that we secured grant dollars to make this possible. Um, so that's the idea. We, we, we secured grant through the state, uh, through the efforts of, lo of our local senator, Senator Phillips Hill, uh, to really pull this off and make this possible. So we're glad to offer that in support to help grow our businesses here locally. Um, but eligibility, um, the two main bullet points here is that a business would be public and open uh, during hours that are convenient to trail users. When we're thinking of trail users times that they're going to frequent a business, think of nine to five in, in, a, good, in a good cohort, but also it may spend, uh, expand based off of the seasons as well. So we may have some times uh, that we really grow that effort too. 
Um, and there's not restricted of what kind of businesses make sense for it. I have a list there. I'm not going to go through it, but uh, that's a that's a, a list of what we're looking at for potential businesses as well. That business that list is not exhaustive. That, that list can certainly grow as we uh, go throughout the program and as different businesses demonstrate interest. Moving to the next slide, um, slide seven. There are criteria that we're looking to install as a part of the Troll Towns Friendly Business Program. Um, when we're looking at, they need to provide a trail friendly atmosphere, essentially making sure that the infrastructure is there for a trail user to come out, hang out, say if they had a, a vestibule area or an area that a trail user can, can hang out uh, to get out of the sun, uh, to get a bite to eat, or anything of that nature, or even access Wi-Fi. That's kind of what we're talking about with the atmosphere. Um, again, for user amenities, that kind of ties right into my last point there too. They can access uh, drinks, they can access to go foods, things of that nature. Um, really comes to fruition too. If there's an area that they can park their bike, um, depending on the type of bicyclist, depending on how frequent they are and the, how serious they are, those bikes can, can range in cost. And they want to make sure that those bikes are secure in specific areas and uh, well lit areas, well secured, well patrolled areas too. So that's something of interest too. Um, and then agree to complete a Trail Towns annual survey. The only way we grow this program and develop this program further is through an annual survey. Uh, we're hoping to get the data that shares that how many trail users make up a business's business, essentially. You know, what is it, where are they coming from? Um, and to get a better idea so we can get a better economic picture of how to promote better. And then additionally, how can we help step up this program too in the years to come? So that's kind of the concept there. Uh, additional criteria, a business would have to meet three of those seven. Um, they would have to commit to training frontline staff. We don't, not necessarily too much detail there, but it's also, it, it comes to the idea that when you're looking at a business, um, they're often the ambassadors of that community in, in more regards. When you go visit somewhere, your first taste of a community is when you go and engage with the business, you get buy to eat somewhere, you get a drink somewhere. Um, and if you had a bad experience, you remember that bad experience and you tell your friends about that bad experience. What we're trying to do is try to help businesses kind of engage in that opportunity and tell them that here's, here's some things you want to do. So when a trail user comes to town, they know uh, the frontline staff at XY Business is going to know what events are going on locally, potentially. And then also, what are the different amenities close by as well? Is there lodging nearby? Are there events going on that weekend? Things of that nature um, that a business, owner, that a business uh, staff uh, member can really kind of relay to anybody who visits another one. Um, and the overall support of the trail community too. Uh, the idea there is that you would support the trail community that's that's along the network. Uh, not necessarily that you know that you know what's going on in New Freedom, but it's also helpful to know what's up the stream as well. What's going on in Railroad? What's going on in Glen Rock? Uh, Seven Valleys, the City of York, anything like that. Uh, membership in YCA, we do have members all throughout the county. Um, they would automatically be uh, one of the three, one of the seven criteria is there, so that would be fine. Um, again, it's not. It's not the critical uh, criteria, but it helps uh, with this program too. Um, trail equipment storage, you, as you can imagine, somewhere to store their bikes, things of that nature. Uh, providing trail gear tools. Uh, think of maybe bike repairs uh, stations. There's a lot of those all throughout the trail as it is right now. We'd like to grow those opportunities too, so maybe there's an opportunity for that. Uh, trail promotions, uh, that kind of ties into the trail community at large, but additionally, it's making sure that you're kind of promoting the trail in different ways, whether it's a trail cleanup day, whether it's you're engaging on the trail, you're doing a 5K, things of that what, of that nature, that's an opportunity too. And then trail event support, any events that are already going on, your business plays a role in it in some way. Um, you know, there's there's runners clubs, you know, bars and restaurants can leverage that and try to and try to play a host to those kind of events, or maybe it is a fundraiser that's for the trail itself and it's helping to plant some trees or um, clean up the trail in some way. There's, you know, there's loads of ideas, and we have it all listed on our website as well uh, for the uh, businesses that participate. Uh, the last slide on the Trail Friendly Business Program, slide eight, is uh, our best practices. I'm not going to exhaust it too much, uh, but as you can imagine, this is these are kind of things we're helping assisting businesses out through the Trail Friendly Business Program. Think of their operations. I mentioned the frontline staff training, uh, but also just try to have a better idea about what the different needs are of the different trail users: cyclists, hikers, bikers, walkers. Um, runners, even think people who have children as well. There's different needs among all those groups. So it's trying to help business uh, help business owners really understand that. Additionally, um, operations and have them consider what their hours of operations are. Uh, different amenities they provide, different support uh, infrastructure, product and purchasing. Uh, people like to buy things that uh, indicate the place that they were at. So think T-shirts, think different Kashi items like that. 
Um, maybe we make recommendations on that. So that's kind of where all these best practices come into play, making those recommendations that really could make a business stand out uh, for trail users. Um, are there any questions with the trail friendly business, or would you prefer me to continue with the presentation? No, you can go okay, ahead. I'll just continue. I'll just continue on. Um, quick slides or these general updates, uh, but I wanted to make sure this council knew. Uh, the Yoko Bloom Grant Trail Towns Edition. This was a uh, we we run a micro grant program. It's administered by the YCA to provide local businesses funding to expand and improve their services and grow. Or please forgive me, bloom. Um, to the next level. Um, so that's the idea there. It's a micro grant that literally it, it goes from about $250 to $5,000 um, of what we've done in previous years. Uh, we ran the first inauguration of that this year um, and, we, and we intend for future years to run it again. Uh, but we were successful in a way that we, we helped fundraise for the, for the, for the grant program itself. Uh, we partnered with the York County Community Foundation to bring it to $25,000. We awarded uh, 12 businesses on May 11th, uh, their grant award. Uh, the average grant size was, was just over $2,000, 2,083. Um, but we had an application pool of about 19 businesses that represented all of the five shell towns. Here in New Freedom, uh, we awarded three different businesses, uh, Summit Grove uh, Camp, uh, Gil, uh, Gil Ice Italian Ice and Handed Ice Cream, and then New Freedom Roasting Company in Delhi. Um, so again, it, we're ecstatic about this, about this effort because it brings um, pretty much those needed dollars to help a business get onto the other side of some idea they had sitting there for a while. Um, it's, a, it's a free program that anybody can apply for. Uh, we do host the, the Yoko Bloom grant program throughout the year. Um, there are specific uh, cohorts and additions. As I mentioned here, the Trail Towns one, there has been uh, some for downtown York, the city of York, um, and all throughout the county as well. So uh, we're looking to do that uh, more and more each year and to grow those programs. Uh, slide 10, really quick, is a YCA general update. Uh, YCA hosts a lot of different events and engages a lot of different uh, issues. Uh, one in particular that's close to our hearts our workforce development. Um, there's definitely a, a hiring need all throughout the country, Commonwealth, the, the all together in the county. Um, so we're hosting a hiring fair on Thursday, June 17th. This is free and open to the public. We have over 60 employers. It runs from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at People's Bank Park. Um, we also have some job prep too, uh, most, more specifically on June 16th, the day before. There's a ri resume writing class. There's, a, there's an applicant who uh, needs some help with their resume. Uh, they can call into this number that's listed here and uh, they can get the assistance there uh, to, um, to assist them writing their resume. But additionally, job can candidates also with criminal records will also be considered for many of the, many of the employers listed. Um, real quick, let's see on the economic action plan. Uh, YCA does this with the County of York every 10 years. It's, it's, it's a benefit to the 10 year comprehensive plan of the county. And uh, we provide key focuses on economic growth and development throughout the county. Uh, all this is listed on, our, on the website, uh, yorkcountyeap.org. Um, some of the sample key objectives include uh, increase business birth rates and retention, close the income disparity gap, uh, remove barriers to employment, increase broadband access, um, some, some clear barriers to employment that we've, that we've identified is transportation, childcare, a lack of their of access. Um, so those are things we hope to work on these next 10 years. Um, and the last point here uh, that ties into my last point is the countywide broadband expansion survey. Uh, this is a survey that's going on right now uh, throughout the county. We need as many citizens to take the survey as possible. Um, it's an opportunity to fill holes where FCC data uh, kind of lacks and provides an indication of what internet access looks like in your county. Um, ideally, we're gathering this information uh, on what access currently looks like or the lack thereof, uh, speeds, costs, um, and ultimately to help advance this initiative once we get this data, it's going to help us in the County of York uh, secure grants to ultimately bring a better internet coverage throughout the County of York. Um, to participate in the survey, it's www.yokofiber.com. Uh, um, the last slide kind of gives a, a better picture of what it looks like in internet access. On the left, you'll see what it appears to be, what internet access looks like in your county. Uh, what that show, that map shows, is uh, our mil, uh, megabytes upload speeds. And, um, and it's kind of daunting a, a little bit. Uh, more specifically, in your county, we do have 46.5 megabits for download and then 5.8 for millibytes upload. 
Uh, that's pretty good for the most part, considering that most individuals would be able to remote work at those speeds. Um, but when we get down to the actual uh, municipalities and actual neighborhoods, that speed kind of weighs off a little bit. And then what additionally what we've got in the past year is that uh, we have plenty of anecdotes, we have plenty of families who reach out and share that uh, they don't have internet access at home or the affordability of it is too much. So we have an access and affordability issue. So that's the idea of our survey. Our survey is trying to get the real data from households to share what the concepts are and what we actually need to do. Um, so that way we can turn and go to our legislators. Uh, we can also turn and go to the providers and say that this is where internet has access holes currently exist and where we would like to fill them. Um, the County of York is, uh, established a task force, uh, broadband task force last year um, in an effort to broaden uh, broadband access. And uh, one of the projects that came through that was also a 16 mile expansion project. This is a backbone network. Um, what that really means is that it's a backbone fiber optic network that runs down the Heritage Rail Trail at this point. Um, it leveraged existing conduit that was underneath the rail trail. And it, to this, today, actually, you can go on the rail trail and you can access the internet primarily closer to uh, Seven Valleys and the Glen Rocks area for free. Um, it's, it's, county, it's county access right at this point, open to the public to utilize along the, along the rail trail. But our vision is that we would grow access throughout the county, uh, create these networks um, that expand access and, and ultimately make it easier for providers to eventually come in and do so. Um, but through right now, it would be a county-owned county utility and eventually uh, that providers could lease access to. So that's the uh, short version of all of that. I'm happy to answer any kind of questions that may have come up through uh, this presentation. Uh, but ultimately, I think this council for the time. Thank you very much. Um, does council have any questions? David? Yeah, I just have one. You guys were around, uh, I guess, last month or something like that, talking about things that we can get, like the, the stations. So you're going back in the, is it the near future? Yes, yes, um, with the, for the action team. Yep. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll come back. I asked uh, Andrew, didn't realize he was actually on vacation, so uh, that, that's good. But um, but I was going to get back with, with him to schedule something in July to, okay. for this action team. Perfect. Yeah. Um, can I ask a question? Uh, you know, the, the uh, I was just wondering about, you know, they have the signage and the, like a kiosk or that you would have right. layout of the challenge. Is that still in the plans or? Are you seeing at the uh, trailheads themselves, the the large signs, at the trailheads? Yeah, yeah, the ones like if someone comes up to your your town, mm -hmm. that it yep. gives like a layout so they know where some of the places are. Yep. Um, so that's actually a part of the action team's goals for each community is that we would like to um, update that those boards um, to give a better indicator of what's in the next community. So when you're in say when you're in Seven Valleys, you have a better idea of what's down the trail in, in say New Freedom or Glen Rock. Um, so that would be the idea that we'd update those. And then additionally, just because we, we wouldn't necessarily list all the businesses along the trail on there, uh, we would indicate more like this is where like food and drink access or some things of that nature. Um, but we would have links or QR codes on those boards um, that would link to the website that we can easily update and they can share a better listing, an accurate listing of what's in those communities. All right, thank you. Yeah. Is there any plan for any additional grants or anything in the future? Um, so pending success, and then pending also how many people sign up for the Trail Town Friendly Business Program, we can get a better idea of economic data. Um, so then we would like to apply for additional grants, either through the Department of Community Economic Development through the state, um, and maybe some other endeavors through maybe the federal government as well. Nothing right now that you know. Nothing as of right now, but it doesn't mean that we won't have interest in applying for it at later. later. Sure. Any questions from the audience? Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Brian? I don't think I did. Thank you. I forgot. I forgot. It's on my first page here. The meeting is being recorded, so staying here implies that you are consenting to being recorded. I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I, I wasn't really talking, I was just talking, I'm sorry. I was kind of talking to everybody. Uh, the meeting's being recorded, so staying in the meeting implies that you're consenting to being recorded. Okay. Okay. Um, do I need to use this or can you guys hear me? I can hear you. You have a very nice voice. Okay. Um, 
I'm here tonight because uh, my other property is uh, 10 Second Street. I have two commercial properties in it that I've been trying to rent. Uh, the one is brand new and been redone. Um, they had a fire in it. So there was a tattoo parlor there. I don't know if you guys know where that was, but we had a fire in there. I went through all the um, engineering and everything to have the space redone up to code with everything that they asked me to do. Put a handicapped bathroom, handicapped stuff in the back. Um, when I every time I have somebody come in to look at it, they come to I send them to the borough uh, to find out if it's okay for what they want to do. I have a study that I can look at and see if it fits into what I think it works at, but that doesn't mean much. So I send them to you guys, and they're told right away that they need to go to an architect and have an architect draw up a plan for them and submit that to the borough. Um, and when they look into that, you're talking to $5,000 to have a plan like that drawn up just to find out if they can put a business in that space that they want to put in that space. Um, I, it, it, as you can imagine, it scares almost everybody away. Um, I had a person that I was working with that wanted to do an art studio and I got the plans from the original engineering thing from 2019. I gave them a copy of that. The engineer told them that they could give them a discount, which would be like $500 to do the drawing on this thing for there. So it still was going to cost $500. I agreed to pay for that, which because I'm trying to get somebody in there. Um, even that didn't end up not working out. So I, I don't know which way to turn as to how to be able to get people in there. I'm trying to, to do good for the borough and get businesses back in. I live here. I've lived here for 17 years. I'd like to have stores I could go to, a, you know, a little shop or something, you know. But I don't know how to help people to do that. And I don't know what to tell people when they come in. Because I can't, you know, I can't spend $2,000 for each person that comes into my business to see if they can come into the building. That, that'd be crazy. Yeah. Um, first, first of all, let me say, I think that stinks. I mean, I really do. It but, it, but it's a state law, right? I mean, really? I, I'm not sure that the borough can weigh the state law. From what I understand, though, um, the barber that was just trying to come in, um, he was all ready to open. Um, he had submitted a lot of his paperwork and everything, but um, it ran into some personal issues, and that's why he couldn't come in. But he has a shop in Mechanicsburg, and he has a shop in York. And in both of those shops, he wasn't required to do that. Only in New Freedom was he required to get the architect engineer drawing. And, and, and I guess, yeah, and those two, it, it's. It's unfortunate under the code when you're talking about a change of occupancy of a commercial building, and the, and the two that you referenced, it may not have been a change of occupancy, and therefore he may not have been required to, to, to follow that step. But I guess in this case, that's what the issue is. Well, he and said it was a different. It wasn't the same shop. It wasn't something different when he what, came in. But it, yeah. What's the legal definition of a change in occupancy? And I have also. I was issued when I redid the building a use an occupancy permit. Right. Okay. Um, I thought that I could yeah. rent it out to somebody. I'm thinking, okay, I can't get somebody to rent it on a monthly basis. Um, maybe my mother-in-law's an artist and a bunch of her friends yeah. do those art thing where you get together and do painting and stuff like that. Big open space, nothing in there at all, all wide open. Could I rent it out for you know, put tables in, let them do a little art class or whatever in there. Because it's got, I got a U of for the building. Well, I'm correct. All right, it's been a while since I rented out commercial space, and this is new. But it seems to me that, and the way I always did it, people coming in, unless they were making a change like adding sinks or changing it from a storefront to a beauty shop, yeah. Yeah. You didn't really have to do anything unless you were changing electrical or plumbing. Yeah. Now, is that not the same as it I, is today? This is the first time I'm aware of this, okay. this so I, I, I don't want to talk okay. off the cup. Sure. I, I think, Wade, you've been closer to yeah. this than probably anyone at this point in time. 
And as the building code official, you'd be the one actually interpreting and issuing the opinion. It is a change of use. Right now, the occupancy he has is for a shell building, same as you would grant for some of this building. General building retail would have what it's for. Now, what goes in that law, you still have to issue an occupancy certificate for that specific use. Uh, well, it could be I, the I, I same could, use, but it could be a different layout. It could be you. to go Thank from something that's a non-hazardous type of use, or a retail I, 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 to someone that's selling fireworks. Now you have a hazardous use. Oh, I, still I, the same yeah. use. I would so understand. I would understand. Well, why so would he have to have an architect do a drawing if they're not changing right. the, and the, and the building? My, change my, of occupancy from a commercial He has a certificate. Is that he has a certificate. Yeah. Wouldn't it be the, very similar, like if you have a liquor license and you're moving it? Well, I again, you know, I, mean, I would, I would think if, if, you're moving, if you're moving outrageous. If you're moving tables in, you know, or even just shelving, as long as you're not changing. I'm not the changing things. I didn't change anything like that. I can understand if they wanted to move yeah. a, something like ridiculous. a sink or change electrically. Of course, you got to go get the proper permits to do that, but. Just they put a different person into the building in something that's already approved for general yeah, yeah, retail. It's, 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 but it's, I don't. I, I, I so much appreciate our building code officials when it's when it's a shell of a building. You have to go through the proper permitting to ensure the improvements that are being made to so to to accommodate that well, use well, what, is being done correctly as well, well as what, the use itself. But if, but if you're not making a change to the use, it's a shell of the building. You know, in this case, I believe I saw drawings where all they were doing was putting tables in. I mean, right. it wasn't like they were changing anything architecturally to the building. I mean, I could see where, it's I mean, you're basically, if you if you enforce it to that letter where anytime somebody comes in, I'm not disagreeing with you, but if you enforce it to that extent where anytime somebody comes in, you have to go out and get stamped architectural plans, you're basically telling me I can't use my building. But what he's asking me is, this person moves in, I have to issue this person an occupancy certificate. Mm -hmm. I issue an occupancy certificate based on the 2015 coup. The drawings he has registered for the, that were submitted by the insurance company when the restoration, when the place caught fire, was under the 2009 coup, and it's been well over a year since then. Okay, so you're saying you're looking at the basic structure, not the actual whether he's putting tables. The year of the code, I can't issue a two thousand. I, I can't issue a certificate that says this meets current code based on drawings of, from a two thousand and nine. Understand? Use okay. That's not there. Right. So let me ask this question then: If he has it approved under the two thousand fifteen code, and assuming five years from now it's still the two thousand and fifteen code. Is he going to have to get stamped architectural plans just because he wants to move tables and shelving? If it's going from, if you're not changing use, right now you have no use. Okay, so what, what he's saying is that when you rebuilt it, it was under the 2009 code. I understand. So he's, he's just saying that you have to make sure it's under the 2015 code. I, but they're telling me that every person I've come that I've sent there has to get this drawing. They've not one, not one person that's gone in there. Has but I think it's only for the drawing. first time. And I, even, and I think, I think. I, I, even when I asked if I could use my use of occupancy yeah. for the general retail, which is what I thought, being able to let the people rent it to right. people to do the art stuff, that's retail. It's a part of retail. Let, let it's like a. Let me ask one, one more I'm, question. I'm the owner of that business, so I, but I'm renting the space. Let me, let me just ask one more question. If he gets a 2015, let's say he just leaves it empty for right now, and he comes to you and says, I want to update my use and occupancy to 2015, can he do that with what he currently has? Because he already has drawings. Yes. And, 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 you would have, and you would review that and grant the permit for, or no? Good for the building, not for a use. You have to give it a use. Depends on what you put in there. But I'm saying you're only allowed, it depends on the use. You're only allowed so many people per space. We don't know what's going in there. You don't know the occupant load. You don't know if you have sufficient means of use. You don't know if you have the proper fire protection. 
You don't know, you don't know unless you know what's going in there. And that's what the certificate of occupancy is based on. Saying this building, this use is safe. Right. What is that for? So wait, that's 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 at least the certificate of occupancy is because there was we're talking money. We're talking big time money. Constantly to the price team. Isn't that right? It's thousands of dollars. Thousands of dollars. Hold on, we we were we just in one conversation, please. It appears to be dated July 19, 2019. Yes. For a use of quote business. What what is use that? Use group B. There's different use groups. When he prints in the yeah. zoning use is not the same as a building code use. The building code has different use groups. So it is what he's proposing out of a out of a different. It depends on what it is. Yeah. But it was so issued for general retail. It was issued for a specific. For the size of the for the size of the building, yes, it's probably going to fall under a B depending on what he's putting in there. It's a real good possibility because it's not large enough for. So, so what he got back in 2019, what did that allow him to do? Here, let's pa pass it around, read it. What, what, what did that allow him to do? If I can't do this, I would, would like to be able to make them apartments at least. I could have read it, both of them, as apartments a yeah, yeah. hundred times over. I mean, I mean at least 20 times. Big cost factor. And if they're one bedroom it's apartments, it's but it would be a, a nice one bedroom apartment. Yes. Drawings, it has to be a way to Again, it's more money I have to spend. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you spend a lot, you put a lot so of money into it. So, if he, so if, we, we really can't, if we all talk, you're, you're not going to hear what part of it is. If he, for instance, wanted to put a tattoo parlor in there right now, exact same thing. Boomtown comes back and, and brings their tables. Does he have to get? A different occupancy since it's already approved for that. It's been taken for a year. Over a year. That's the key. I can't hear what you're saying. He said it's been vacant for it's a year. It's been vacant for a year. Over a year. Over a year? Yes, it has been for over a year. Because it can't get anybody in. Because, because, because of the code. That's what I just said. Thank you. I think it's true. Okay, let's, let's assume just for the sake of argument that it wasn't vacant for a year. That it Boom Tom moved out a month ago and he wants to put another tattoo person in there. Can then he use this certificate? They would just apply for a change of occupation certificate if you want the, the business one to change the name. Okay, and that wouldn't require, that would just require a, um, an occupancy permit. It wouldn't require engi stamped engineering drugs. They would already be on file. They would already be on file. Okay. So I think what you need to do, and I, and I, I mean, I'm, the way I understand it, what you need to do is find somebody, get somebody in there once, and, and, and have continued occupancy, and then you'll be able to renew the occupancy when they leave. And I think as long as you aren't changing the number of people in the building or any electrical or plumbing items that you should be able to just get an occupancy permit at that point. When I had that one issued, they issued it as a general retail. It's what he's saying is it says business. It says business, not general retail. When, when they talked to the engineer, he informed them that it was issued for a general retail business. Because that's what I asked him to do because the tattoo parlor and the time that it took, the year it took to get all the stuff done, had gone someplace else. So I called them, changed the, that, the thing from, took it, had the plans changed legally, all, all the paperwork done to change the plans to remove the clean up room that was in the back, that he got a washroom, you know what I mean, that he, we didn't need anymore. So I took that out and made one big open space so that I'd be able to use it as a general retail store with what, whoever wanted to come in to put whatever tables or whatever they wanted to into that space. It would just be an open space with all brand new everything. Um, so that's what I did. So that's why I've been using it as an office because my insurance company doesn't want it to be vacant. So I have put a chair and a table in there and I use that as my office, sure. as my rental office. So it's really technically never been vacant. It's been my office that I would have oh, yeah. was thinking about doing the retail stuff with. Mm -hmm. I haven't done it because I was hoping to get around. Um, but if I can't get around, I gotta do, I'll tr try to do something to get some kind of income coming in. Too. Is this something that you can look at and get back with Wade and sure. see what we can what we can do? Because I mean, I 
you're 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 virtually taking his, his property if you can if you can't run it. I, and I guess yeah. the one question that you that's can't right. ask your building code official if, if there is a provision that's absolutely clear, you just can't ask them to, to look the other way. Oh no, he absolutely not. Yeah, I mean he but does I mean, have to follow everything. I mean the other one that where the scissors was. I haven't done anything to because I can't even get permission to rent the one I did everything to. So scissors is going is I mean that's been Mr. McNew's hair shop for longer than I've been around. So it's, it's been a hair shop forever. And then it was Tom's for another twenty years. And now it's now it's vacant. But I'm not sure what I can do with that. I mean I don't know what I'm gonna run into. They uh, one person came down and they told him that I was gonna have to put handicap access ability into the building. Um, they were gonna want me to do a handicapped bathroom in there. Well, it's only 500 so square feet. If I do all that, there's, no, there's nothing left for retail. So, I mean, I can't do that in that in, in that much space. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. Um, and it's been a business for yeah, 60 I mean, years, so, so. Normally those items are grandfathered, right? I mean, I. No, you change something. So if I can't do that with that building, that's why I said, can I turn that one into a one-bedroom apartment? It's a, a 18 by 12 room in the front, or 18 by uh, 18 by 13 room in the front, and then an 8 or 12 by 20 room in the back that are connected. I could make a bedroom and a nice living room kitchen combination, very big bedroom, and a nice apart but one bedroom apartment out of it. I'm, I've had at least 20 to 30 people call. My other friends have had people calling them about um, if it, we could rent it and switch it over to an apartment. So if I can't do the commercial, can I please get do something so I can? Yeah. Can you can you give us a week? I mean, I, I give us a week because I, what I'd like is yeah. to Steve to review it, and Wade and I will talk. Steve and I will talk, and we'll figure out. I'm sorry to be so emotional. Oh, no, no. I, I, you know, I mean, <laughs> if I were standing in your spot, I would be more emotional than you are. <laughs> it's frustrating. I, mean, I understand you, entirely you what you're going through. Put a lot through. of time and work into yeah. it, and yeah. now you can't do anything with it. Yeah, that's just not, yeah. you can't. You wait, can't. wait, is there any, is there any use that's going to be uh, impact parking, for instance? You, you know, you're talking about inside the building, but, you know, it, it has, something inside? You want to do something inside the building, and it may affect how many parking spaces you need. Is that is that a potential issue? Yeah, before you some, get too far down the road, and it comes up, and somebody well, you didn't tell me that before. So that's something that would fall under the zoning portion right. of it. Our, our zoning, and that's right. That's another reason why we need to know what the use exactly. is. Well, there are four parking spaces and four garages on the property. Um, so I do have parking spaces, which is more than most of the people in the central business district have. I mean, Shaw has absolutely no parking spaces for his business. So, right. if, and if you, and the way I read it is there are exemptions for the central business district for parking because of that of that factor. And that's the way when I talk to Shaw, that's what they explained to me also. Um, so that's where I, that's what where we were working with with that. There is more space in the yard to add parking right, if it was well, required, but. What, what, and I've seen this when I was working too. You know, somebody wants to change the use, and every, you know, you start with with a different set of rules when you change the use. After like most of the time, it's, it's a year. Years gone by. Years gone by. Nothing's been happened to it. Now you change the use. There's new parking requirements, uh, etc. And you know, those things are in zoning ordinance, so the borough can't waive it. Then you have to go to the zoning hearing board, get a, a, either a variance. Uh, it's probably not something that's uh, subject to special exception. So, you know, I know it's it's difficult to understand, but when rules change, the borough, you know, if the, if the property's been empty, it's, it's a different situation with, with the case of Shaw Survey. How long they've been there since since the bank left? I mean, they've been there a long time. So, you know, they, they're the sort of grandfathered in, in some respects where you're not because it's been empty, even though you had a fire, it's been empty, and now you want to start over again. I'm just saying, you need to be aware of some things that you know the, the borough doesn't have. Uh, uh, there are exceptions for those. 
Well, well right, right, right into the rules. Not, so. not in zoning. In now, zoning there's really, no, there's really, I mean, Wayne just showed me a section of the law that says he, he, his hands are tied. I mean, he's not allowed to waive it. This might be something that we have to, like, even call the state legislature about to see. I mean, because otherwise I have a dead property, which I don't know what to do. I mean, do I sell it to a builder and dip owner into the thing and build something? I mean, is that what we do? Yeah. Yeah, give, give, me, give me a week because I'm going to have to look put up four townhouses, you know? <laughs> we could change the name of the town. I, I, I already talked to them. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it's a shame because we're trying to make, bring new businesses into exactly. I'm trying town. to do the right thing. I really am. I, yeah, I, hope no, you guys I know understand. you are. I know you are. And, it's, and, and give us a week to, to try to hash it out and see. If what wiggle room there is, and what we can, you know, what we can do to to meet the the letter of the law, but still give you what you need to. Because I don't, I mean, it's almost. I, I mean, I would feel like my property was being taken from me if I were right. standing where you are. If I can't do commercial, please look into something I can do to put it in the apartment so that I can at least get started on one of them making it into the apartment. I keep the commercial property yeah. that's just been redone for last and see if I can get a convert somebody in there, but at least I can start on scissors and kids, try to get something. No, well, you're, you're not going to be the only one that runs into something like this, obviously. I mean, it's going to impact real estate all through the town. So right. we really need to get I mean, like to get, I mean, I'd love to see the town get stuff back and come back <laughs> to life again. I really would. So. Yeah. What, what you did, was it, was it a situation similar to with, with Bunny's TV after you left and somebody else wants to move in and you got, you have to comply with certain requirements, either zoning, building code, etc. Correct. And parking, etc. You know, and if if the road decides, well, we're just not going to look at this. We're going to look the other way. And just, then, what's, what's well, what do you, what do you tell the next person that comes in and says, well, no, I'm not live with this. Where's parking? And you're going to look the, the other uh, way for something else. Right that's that's where's their parking at? So I guess on the they don't have any parking. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think. They so, <laughs> they just opened, so yeah. they actually opened in between the time. So yeah. all right, well let us let us. I'm sorry. Let us out a week and. Thank you very much. I appreciate you listening, Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, that brings us to approval of the minutes. Chamber of the audio upgrades is the minutes I'm looking at. You're not looking at the same minutes that I'm looking at? Audio video yeah. upgrades. Yeah. Right. Well, the bottom page. Yeah. Bottom. It's for later. That's, it was just my question. I'll come to it later. Oh, okay. But that it's correct as written? Yes. Okay. It's correct, but I have to, well, we'll wait for later. Okay. 
Um, treasurer's report. I want to point out on the first page of the treasurer's report, we're showing uh, negative cash balance on the general fund and the water fund. That's because the loan that we took out is a drawdown loan, and we haven't had to draw down against it. So this just shows that we have an obligation. We have the money to meet it. It's just not been requested yet, so we haven't drawn down on that loan. There's a weekly invoice for a Crystal Conrad. What is that? Where is she? It shows up every week. Mm -hmm. Do we hire a cleaning person? What page are you on? I'm on the second, the very first page of accounts payable. 42916. here for carpets by Martin. Is that for the community center for the room that we had the problem with? Was that ever approved by council to do that? No, it's carpet in here. He's saying it's carpet in here. Oh, carpet in here. And if that's only the uh, deposit, how much is the whole amount? And doesn't council need to approve that? I mean, the carpet, the carpet was worn through to the concrete. It was here. No, I'm not. It, this, this he said that's. He said that's for here. It was for all the rooms, right? It was for the whole thing. I mean, we had holes in the carpet in the offices. I'm not sure. I. I'm not sure that you need a vote for a replacement of something that's damaged all the way through. It wasn't. That's it. Well, uh, a was it in the budget? Did you have the money and set aside in yeah. the budget for carpet? Yeah. I don't. Well, well sometimes you have just a general it's maintenance. It's just a general repair. maintenance. Yeah. And repair. Yeah. Okay, I was just wondering because yeah. I, I saw just so I mean that's a good amount for a deposit and I didn't know what it was for. So we're having all the carpet in the building redone. That's what already, you're saying. It's already been done in mm -hmm. some of the rooms, right? It wasn't done? I thought Andy's was on the Oh, okay. Yeah, it makes sense. Well, it made sense to paint first, too. Yeah. So. specified an amount under which or over which he has to come to the council. Um, usually there's a number, a magic number, $700 yeah, I, or $700. Does anybody know what that is? I, I don't know. Yeah. And I don't know if we had one when time he was here, and I don't know where we find that information, but I, I you probably should, should have clarify. that. <laughs> yeah, you probably should have some number yeah. that, um, I mean that was a maintenance item, and it, it wasn't it wasn't like you couldn't do it. I mean we've got holes here, we've got holes in the background. So I mean, it's, so will somebody look into that? And take yeah. it? I would imagine that's what in a resolution or an ordinance. It's, it's either in a policy or an ordinance. Sometimes the municipality has got an ordinance setting forth the powers of the manager, yeah. or in this case the administrator, and it would be in something along those lines. 
You wouldn't be in the first class town. Oh, yeah. We wouldn't be in the first coach. Right. Oh, no, no, no. What, uh, what would you recommend for something like that as far as to proceed if we were to add or change something in, in the, the rules as far as an ordinance or? What do you, oh. what do you find in other municipalities? Um, yeah. I see it both ways. So I, I can't criticize you if you did one way versus the other. What about a dollar amount? Would, is there something that, is there a guideline that any other municipality uses? Um, Gen generally speaking? Yeah, I can't say that. Okay. This issue typically almost never comes up because everyone knows what it is, and so yeah. Uh, yeah, I can get some guidance for you. Okay. Okay. I normally, you know, like the water tower and things like that, they come kind of before council. Oh yeah, I don't think any of us know what the dollar amount is for for approval. That's right, right. Like yeah. Ann said. like to request that the minutes and the treasurer's report be included back in the agenda for the citizens because when you're going over this stuff we like have no idea of anything out here okay yeah can we, we do, do can we do that that'd be helpful thank you Stop when the the, the uh, consent agenda stop stopped. Yes, mm -hmm. I apologize for that. And I didn't really, I didn't even notice that. Thank you. Okay. Would it be acceptable if we do get our new um, on the track page, web page up that we would post it there? Is that acceptable, or um, because the consent agenda? I don't know how widely that was distributed, but it seems like you could get to more people if you had it on the web. Well, I think it would be good to have online, but I think it would be good to have this attached yeah. because we're busy lives and having to go there and print it out and everything for the people that do take the time to come here to have it already available to them would be great. Yeah, we could do that, no problem. There's a question about concerned citizens. Concern. 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 Do you know how old the carpet was? I think it was original. Probably like how old the carpet was. was the building? 22, 23 years. Yeah, 23 years. <laughs> it was old. If it were in your house, you would have replaced it by now. No. I need a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve the treasurer's report as prepared. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. President's report. Okay. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, Andy, Andrew and I and uh, Ryan met with um, Penn Waste because, as you know, We've been experiencing problems more and more frequently with our trash pickup. We've tried to be uh, very accommodating for them because we realized that during COVID they've had trouble with in, in keeping a number of employees, we, they've had trouble keeping drivers, but as it continued to uh, blossom we, we decided to have a meeting. So the reason for the meeting were the, uh, the reason for the service issues were that the drivers were switched out due to a resignation. They had a lot of loaders were turning over. Um, and it was acknowledged by 
our, the, by our, our, our group and New Freedom that there are employment problems at a national level, but the contractual service had to be met. So they've taken action to for uh, six things. Uh, service logs are going to be shared with the borough manager each day. The driver uh, for, and loader for Singer is being replaced. All drivers will use a punch list or a check sheet to ensure all residences are served. Uh, route training is going to be conducted on weekends. The drivers are going to stop in at the borough office at the end of their run to uh, report and also to see if any calls have been received uh, for service. And on days when the drivers start early, to either for heat or for storms, the early roads will be run through one time before they leave the area to make sure that all the trash is gone. Uh, we agreed, the borough agreed, to wait two weeks until June 27th uh, to give Penn Waste a chance to implement these six items. After two weeks, New Freedom Borough is going to exercise the penalty section of the contract if needed. Hopefully it won't be needed and they'll be able to, uh, and that basically gives New Freedom Borough the right to uh, to deduct $25 for each house missed. So it's a pretty hefty penalty. Uh, citizens shall be notified to call in not later than 3.30 to report trash issues. Andy's going to put that on the uh, savvy citizen. And citizens uh, will be notified to put their trash out the night before pickup, just to make sure that it, it's out. I know some people try to rush. I know I'm chased after the trash truck. So make sure that it's, that it's out there. Um, and we thank Penn Waste for their continued relationship and look forward to resolving the issue. So that was the meeting. Go ahead. I, I just have a, a comment. Um, as part of the IGC with Kim and going to Stewartstown Borough meeting this past week, um, they had an issue there. And in their contract, I appreciate the $25 for the missed house, but in their contract, if more than six homes are missed on a street, they have the ability to withhold two thousand dollars from pen waste. Is that part of my contract also? I don't believe that we have uh, uh, six. We have we've seen the contracts. Yes, yeah, so Andy need to pull out the contract because there is there is a list of penalties, and it's yeah. all different for all different municipalities. Okay. So we, we just need to find out what so maybe ours is you know and, maybe review sister communities and see kind of what they do, and maybe we could. Yeah, because that would need to be an update to the next contract. Yes, but to, right. yeah. for future. Right. Yeah, I mean, that, that up. contract so is, I, had, I think, five years old or three years old. Right. Yeah, so I had no idea that was even. It's a new company that bought it. Allowable like, like that. We still, yeah. we yeah, they transferred the contract. It, it, yeah, it, it was an assigned contract, so it, was, it wasn't. It. When is the contract up? Uh, the end of this year. So we December. We renegotiate. We have three um, add-on periods, one year each, that we can do. Um, but the actual contract is up December 31st. Okay. So I believe Stewartstown had even discussed charging them what rebating back to a household that wasn't picked up each time five dollars and three three dollars and forty two cents per miss. They kind of calculated out that's kind of what each one was missed. Yeah, we don't want to create an administrative nightmare either. <laughs> Well, you know, if you're paying for something, you ought to get it. If you don't get it, you don't pay for it. How, how do they determine what, when the house was missed? If the trash wasn't out on time, who? They have, the, a, they have the a camera on the truck. So, okay. so they'll be able to see, right. like, you know, when, when they pull up to my house, right. they'll see that my trash was not out. And, okay. you know, so they, they can do that. Good. Singer, I think just about everybody puts theirs out the night before. And they didn't pick up anybody's yeah. on Singer from, I, I know, at least from High Street all the way down to the bridge and beyond. And that trash sat there for, I mean, we're getting into summer. That gets a little smelly. Well, I mean, and then we've got a problem also in town with foxes, with mm -hmm. raccoons, yeah. and, and they love that stuff. Speaking so if they don't pick it up. Do, do we have, wait, maybe wait, do we have a requirement that trash has to be put into a container? Because a lot of people set bags out. It's not foxes yes. or raccoons, it's birds, I mean crows. Oh, You're yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Got stuff all over the street. The trash guys aren't going to pick that up. It's, I, I, I read it. It says, uh, did you correct me? Uh, container shall be set at the curbside. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to be in a container. 
has to have a lid, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Who gets to write those citations? Yeah. Yeah. Does, I'm sorry? Does Wade write those citations or does somebody else do it? Because we can start a list. Give me, give, hey. Yeah. I, I think let's let's give Penn Race the two weeks. I mean, it's only two weeks. Give them the two weeks to try to get things implemented that we've agreed on and then see where we end up from there. I mean, and, and it's, you know, the, the, the thing you're going to run into is if one person doesn't get their trash picked up, um, you know, you're going to have to go back and pull a camera. And yeah. that's going to work for some period of time, but if it's continually our fault, they're not going to keep the cost of money to, to take time to go through the tapes and stuff. So, you know, I think we, you know, we're trying to build a, a sense of cooperation with them too. So, uh, let's hopefully they'll be able to, to repair that their reputation in the community. Um, the other thing that they did, which which is a good thing, um, we also thanked uh, Joel for the donation of the two free tra years of trash, and that's going to be given away at uh, the concert in August. And uh, he said that these uh, free service donations are to be given uh, in a free drawing to the citizens of New Freedom Borough to help foster good relationship between the citizens and Penn Waste, and that he was happy to make the donation. So, I mean, they're trying to be good citizens, too, and good, you know, to, to New Freedom. They normally donate trash containers for the Lions Club, yep. Carnival, and, you know, so. You know they 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 work with us, so let's try to work with them too. Yeah, and it's hopefully appreciate. it'll be it'll be resolved. So, Tough business, and they've just taken it over. This is their first year. We've had COVID. Yeah, uh, it's it's tough everywhere getting back in the saddle. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about is uh, there's COVID relief money is coming to the municipalities. Um, We've talked about it before. We thought it was about 460K. We found out that it's 490K. So that'll be coming to New Freedom. Um, you can use it for assistance to businesses. You can use it for housing, tourism. Um, you can use it for hazard pay, although I don't think we've had to really have much hazard pay. Although Here's Donnie the might have been a couple of times, but yeah. Uh, it also can be used for water and sewer and to protect water bodies. It can be used for cybersecurity to protect our infrastructure up to the amount of the lost revenue, which is kind of the gotcha in there because we really didn't have lost revenue from, from uh, the whole COVID thing. Our um, earned income has been on par with, with what we're used to seeing. So when we get the first deposit, which will hopefully come sometime this month, next month, then council will have to sit down and figure out what are we going to do with the funds. And not to slant anyone's opinion, but it would it would be my opinion that we should try to protect the people's tax increases by using the money for things that we are buying this year. As long as it was bought after May 3rd, we can use the money for that. And you can jump in and correct me. On any of this. <laughs> March 3rd, March. Right. Keep going. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. March, March 3rd, what I said? May. Oh, did I? Yeah, March 3rd. And, and that's through 2024. And it's through 20, actually 2026 for well, some cases. You know. Yeah, if you've allocated the project. Right. The project. Yeah, so, um, but we could use this to mitigate any tax increase for, uh, for the uh, infrastructure that we're currently. How much is this first deposit expected to half. be? Half. 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 Okay. So it'll be about $240,000. Uh -huh. $245,000. So and then the second half will come? They later. haven't told us yet. <laughs> later. <laughs> yeah. But this, this year? Probably, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Treasury is really hurrying to get this money out. Yeah. And we've... And the, state the, has first. To, the state has to disperse it, so it's not like they can sit on it and... We were one of the first to get the application in, too. We got it in right away. Do we have a timeline to use that? You have uh, to have I think use that we probably should make a, a commitment on what we're going to use it for by the end of the year. Um, it shouldn't be hard to do. I think what I would suggest that we do is go out to Donnie and to John at the, at the wastewater treatment plant 
and get a list of what they feel they need that we could use this money for and that would be things that were already planned so that it decreases the, the level that we would need those loans that we took. So, because they're drawdown loans if we don't take them. <coughs> Is this something like for the security at the park? We've been kind of discussing that, cameras and so no, forth. You can't use it for that. Why? So no, nothing for the park, really? I understand. I understand it can be used for rec and parks. It can be from, used for health. One of the, health not your, well, it wasn't months. your webinar, but I've been on two other webinars. you got to watch it because the bucket, you got to figure out which bucket. It's the infrastructure bucket. That is stormwater, sewer, water. That's one of them. Right, and if it's the other bucket, you have to demonstrate that you're allocating as a result of a loss of revenue. And that's the problem that we have here. The borough, in order to take advantage of that bucket, can't really show that we lost revenue. The New York Area Tax Bureau has been monitoring earned income taxes for every single municipality in New York County, and they've reached the conclusion that they believe it's almost impossible, but not very difficult for those municipalities to show a loss of revenue. And therefore, you really never get to that bucket. You've got to look to one of the other buckets for allocation of funds. So although you may have been hearing on seminars, I think some of those seminars may have been relying upon, A, if you can show a loss of revenue, and that's the most generous bucket with the most flexibility, that loss of revenue. And that's unfortunately one that most York County municipalities is not going to be able to take advantage of. When you say it's flexible, Steve, you're talking about how you spend it, where you could spend it, right? Because you have to show right. the because it's up short. Yeah. Right, exactly, because it's replacing money you would have right. had anyway, right. so they let you put it anywhere. Yeah. But we haven't had that. Right. We can't show that. On the CARES Act money, I had requested a report that showed what we used the CARES Act money for. Was that part of some of the things that was lost revenue to? I, I'm not sure about that. I didn't see your CARES Act report or anything. Yeah, I, I had requested to see right. that. And and I told, one of the things and I told you lost revenue. Right. And I told you what we used it for. We used it for the bridge. Right, that's so, right. Yeah, right. And, and, also, the bridge. and we also used well, we that. we did have lost revenue, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think the lost revenue that we got from the lack of amusement tax, and if we go back three years and average 17000 a year, and this year we're only getting five. Can we see, pay ourselves see, back see that's the difference? unfortunate part with with this calculation they don't look at specific line items they look at revenue as a whole and that's where most municipalities look if you look at it their earned income tax really hasn't gone down when it was expected to go down and unfortunately you're seeing a lot of um, the, the real estate boom and transfer taxes being uh, over what prior years were Therefore, that's the other problem. You can't say, oh, let's look at this one line and we'll, we're down, and therefore let's allocate that. They look at it as a whole. Barking team with 144 yeah. units and earned income, yeah. um, we just, there's just no way to show. Can we have an educational seminar on this? Because yeah. it sounds like it's <laughs> yeah. going to be. Anyone have anything else before I move on? Uh, the only other thing I wanted to mention was the roads. Uh, a couple of things had to happen before we paved the roads. Donnie had, and his group had to finish the uh, stormwater management, which they did. They got it done in time for, for the paving. Uh, we also had to update and fix all of our crosswalks so that they were handicap compliant, kind of like making a change to a building. <laughs> Same kind of thing. Uh, so we got all of that done and they started the roads today and we anticipate that they should be done in two weeks in, in time for the carnival. Weather, weather permitting. Well, 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 I always weather permitting, you know, it kind of goes without saying. Um, that's all I have. Um, next up would be the uh, mayor's report on the police department. Well. Why don't I go, I have a couple of things ahead of that. Uh, I, I'd like to thank uh, Andrew, and I'm sure Wayne was a part of this. Uh, we seem to really be getting on the letters uh, for ordinances, for houses, for uh, dilapidated properties, for non-mowing of properties. 
I know there was one property and I asked Andrew to look at and uh, uh, he ended up sending three separate letters uh, to the one owner of that property uh, because it's basically falling down for one. The other was the grass was 14 inches tall and I know there were some other ones that were like that and we're finally getting some results thanks to Andrew sending out those letters. I appreciate that very, very much. Um, accumulation of junk, things like that. We're, we're getting somewhere and I think that's due to us passing that new ordinance uh, for what was that zoning? Property maintenance. Property maintenance. Property maintenance. So, so we're getting somewhere on there. I know people have, have been a little impatient and complaining. We're getting there. It's going to take a little bit of time. We only have so many people. Our, uh, myself, if I see something, I bring it back. Um, I think our, our borough employees, when they see something, they bring it back. Andrew's been driving around, even though he doesn't really have the time. You know, he's, he's busy. Andrew's been driving around, taking pictures and, and documenting all of this stuff. So I appreciate that. One thing I would like to ask, though, is this morning, we had North Constitution Avenue shut down, half of it shut down because of paving. Uh, again, the problem was we didn't let people know till after the fact. Uh, they started at 7 o'clock, Savvy Citizen went out at 7.05. I would really like to see these announcements go out the day before or the evening before so people know when they wake up, they're not going to wake up and look at Savvy Citizen, they're going to wake up, grab a bowl of cereal, out the door they go, and there they are, they're stuck. They could have gone a different direction. But like I said, they, it was stated that uh, some of these were to start at 7 o'clock, but it didn't go out on Savvy Citizen until 7.04, 7.10. Yeah, I have it on mine. Uh, I have it on my list to talk to him about as soon as he gets back. Well, I think some, that's the other question. While he's gone, and I tried to find this out, good. While he's gone, who is in charge of Savvy Citizen and updating that? You are doing that, okay? Because Personally, but I'm direct the person who it. I'll tell you, the, the office has a person. Two okay, people because if we it. have an emergency, and as mayor, I need to do something. God forbid, something down here at Arrow Oil blows up, and we gotta. That I know who to get to because we weren't. If Arrow Oil blows up, we'll all know. About we'll all know about <laughs> it, but you know, there there are little Absolutely. things that happen from time to time you know, with accidents and things like that. The chief lets me know ahead of time as soon as it happens and I can get that to you, Wade. You know, Wait, any idea how many that. people have signed up for Chevy Citizen? All part? Uh, last, uh, I think the last one that I recall going out said that when we put residents only, there's a lot of people signed up for residents only, it was about 180 to 200. It's a, it's and that's been a month ago. Because we, we've been continuing to put that on Facebook. I continue to put it on my mayor's page where a lot of people are sharing it. And I'm getting a lot of, gee, thank you for letting me know. I think it's very important. And if people choose not to download it, then don't complain because you don't know the road's closed. i got to say that. Take advantage of it. You know, that's why it's there. But we have to be diligent, too, in making sure that the information is put out there as soon as we, as soon as we know it, not after the fact. Because um, we got a lot of complaints about something last year. Um, I've got something on the agenda here that I'll talk about later. Are we going to talk about speed at Kohler Point? Is that going to be brought up later? Yes. Okay. Um, again, we have been attending Shrewsbury. Um, Erica and I, Shrewsbury's meeting. Unfortunately, I don't know what happened. Glen Rock, Glen Rock didn't have a quorum for their last meeting. Shrewsbury didn't have a quorum for the past meeting until 40, 
45 minutes after it had started, so they decided to go ahead and, uh, and had some things to vote on. Uh, once again, I did get a, a request, when will they know about the sewer meeting? And yeah, that's, that's on the I know, I know that's, you know, you've gotten all the questions. Um, the same question. In May, and I know, yeah, I know. I know, but I'm just passing on from yeah. our committee what they ask us to do. Yes. And Glenrock uh, this week goes back to meeting in person, so we'll be going to that one. Uh, it's been on Zoom. And one other recommendation that I would have is um, Shrewsbury and Stewartstown have their um, public works there and they give a report, a report of what they've done in the borough <coughs> that month. Um, they give a zoning report. The zoning person gives a detailed report of, you know, kind of what's going on, what kind of building within the borough, and... Well, we have we have a zoning and code enforcement report. We have, that's coming up here shortly. We have an engineering report, public works report. Now we can beef it up if you want to know more little things that are going on. Is it something that can be put in the agenda? Their, their whatever report that it's they it's submit? In, it's in the agenda and we address but, it in the meeting. It's under water system, wastewater system, zoning and code enforcement. Right here, okay, for the water. And then what about the zoning? It's H. It's H. V H. 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 I missed it. I saw it. I saw it. I know I saw it. I'm going to go ahead and defer to uh, Donna on the police commission. And I may have something to interject there. Uh, the chief reported that uh, over the past month, overtime was up a little bit in New Freedom. That was mostly due to the arsons that were experiencing. Um, administrative overtime was up in general, and that is because Sergeant Smuckin had to take over Sergeant T's administrative duties, if that was put between the two of them. Traffic enforcement was down for New Freedom for the past month. That was mostly due to all the ongoing road work in the area. Our solicitor brought up that our two SRO contracts were due to expire at the end of June. Uh, both of the schools have requested to renew the contracts for three years. That was approved. And the commission also voted to keep the um, cost to the schools the same for the next year. The commission approved spending $1,600 to purchase a stealth radar unit that will be shared by the municipalities and it's used to track the busiest, busiest times for traffic and the highest speeds in the jurisdictions. Shrewsbury has one, they said we borrowed theirs before, so now we'll all have one to use. Uh, and in the beginning of June, the members of the personnel committee assisted with the uh, police officer applicant interviews. We had two applicants um, that actually made it to the interview. One was from Hanover and one was West Hempfield Township. The consensus was the applicant from West Hempfield scored higher on the interview. He came in for a ride along last week. Uh, that went well. He was offered a COE and accepted it. And he'll be moving on to the rest of the hiring steps, the polygraph, medical, the psych. And it was all I had. That pretty much sums it up. Now we they they are getting um, they feel they're getting uh, a little bit ahead of this arson thing. I can't go into a lot of detail on it because it's still under investigation. Uh, they do have a few suspects, but it's uh, it's as I said, it's under investigation right now. So. The information to the public is very limited, but no, they are working diligently on this um, because it's got, it's got to stop. Yeah, it's got to stop. Time. Now, one of the one of the things too is don't be afraid to report fireworks incidents. We're having some fireworks incidents. We had a major incident down here at the playground. I mean, it was a huge box. I sent right. you a picture of it. It was carnival fireworks in a big box. Kids set it up. It was about 9.30, 9, 9.30 at night, up in the air, some of them going sideways. There are people playing tennis in the tennis courts. 
and the sparks are flying down on top of the people in the tennis court and people down at the equipment with their kids. Um, I guess it was around 9, 9.30. Um, I was ready to call the police and apparently one of the fire staff who has siren and lights uh, went through the alley, turned their lights and their siren on. The kids thought it was a cop and everybody took off in every direction. And that's another reason that a little bit later I want to discuss the idea of trying to get cameras. Uh, Breck is in favor of it, get cameras down there so that we actually know who's doing it. Because by the time the police get there, they're, they're wherever they live, they're running away, they're up the alleys, you know, they're all over the place. And, and with this system, um, we can zoom in and we can actually see who the kids are. We can get their license plate numbers if they're in cars, because we've got a couple of kids down here playing. Have you actually the seen the system and you were able to zoom in with it? Yes. Because I pulled it up online there's no way you would be able to zoom in on a license plate <coughs> on my phone to take a look at. Well, he's going to be here. We're not, uh, this isn't up for a vote. I just wanted to discuss it at this meeting. I think everybody got a copy of it. And he's going to be at the next meeting to discuss it. We'll put him on the agenda. He's going to have be able to demonstrate and show you exactly what uh, they have. Because he showed us on his iPad from down at the park, he pulled up another park and he zoomed in on a car and you could you could read the license plate. But we need to protect, we've got a million dollars invested and I think it's something that needs to be, uh, uh, protect our investment. REC is in favor of it, it was their idea basically and they hooked us up with, uh, uh, with CIA um, but um, that, that's kind of, it would help us tremendously. I, I think that's really, because you all got the uh, police report. I've been making sure that this is included. You can see everything that happens in New Freedom, and I think that's important for you all to see um, what's going on, traffic related. Um, tra it's traffic, mental health, mis missing persons. It's. It gives you a list of everything for each municipality, not just New Freak. So please take a look at that, and you can also keep track of uh, hours and any of our overtime. We're in good shape. Chief takes good care of us. He monitors that uh, a lot. We've got the SROs now that are, are out of school, so they're helping to fill in those other patrol times and uh, fill in for um, Officer Teague and the, and, and the officer that, um, that resigned. So they're, they're in good shape. They're putting in a lot of hours, but we're, in, we're gonna be in good shape. That's Kim, about all I have. Kim, what night was that fireworks? I can tell you because I have a you got picture, I got a picture of it. Yeah, it's Kim and I. Couldn't have missed it. Uh, <coughs> I forwarded that. I hope I didn't delete it. So. Well, if you find it, I'm, I'm going to move on. Yeah, move on. Move yeah. on. I'll, I find it. I'll, I'll give it to you. Okay. I sent it to you. I sent um, it to you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, manager's report. Uh, Andy's on vacation. This is a vacation that. He, he had scheduled prior to starting here. So he had scheduled it around his Spring Grove borough manager's position, but he hadn't scheduled around ours. And we had agreed when we hired him that since he had already scheduled it and had deposit down, that he was going to go ahead and take it. So that's why Wade is filling in tonight. Um, Franklin, Maine, uh, utility work. Um, it, it's, uh, the paving is scheduled, was a scheduled to occur in mid-June, and it has started. We got the crosswalks done, as I said before. 
Um, we completed a review of the personnel manual and job descriptions, and that's in here as a resolution later on tonight. Um, we hired two new employees, uh, one to replace um, a public works employee, and uh, Victoria Law, who is a, a billing uh, clerk. Is Victoria doing that? Is that what his name? Okay, so she's and she's filling in for Savvy Citizen too. Uh, schema, we are um, we got the um, uh, joiner agreement. Uh, we didn't get it in time for this meeting, but we will be advertise get it in for advertising and get it ready for council approval at the July meeting. Uh, the American Rescue Plan we've already uh, discussed um, previously and uh, public works renovations uh, we're going to have a uh, meeting with them it's a zoom meeting uh, with wade on thursday um, this thursday and the website's coming along i'm hoping that we get that up um, this this next month so that was the manager's report does anyone have any questions can i just clarify my last question about their two reports about what again? About, about the two reports, the water and, oh, and sure. the zoning. And I see it here, that's great. Usually what happens, they read it out themselves, the, the supervisor does. So that's that's what I wanted to say on that. And and the water is good because it gives detail down here kind of what happened. The monthly inspection totals is just kind of numbers. Is there a way that that could be more clarified into something like this? So you kind of know, who are these a bunch of fences? Is Burkentine doing something? Is there a new building happening? Is there some, how this, can that be clarified better? So why don't you write up some recommendations for us and submit them and then we can take a look and give them to Wade and uh, Public Works and... Why don't I get some of the examples from the other two boroughs? That'll work too, bring, yeah. bring that, that might be good. Yeah, that'd okay. be great. Good. Okay, Mr. Solicitor. Nothing to add, no action items from this evening. I have a question. Sure. If we haven't gotten there yet, but let's say we have cameras at the park and the cameras pick up some offender, whomever, can we take that without that, obviously without knowing who that person is, and put it on YouTube and our site so that this, somebody in the borough can go, yeah, I know who that is, because we don't know who it is. Police do it all the time. Do, do we have a problem with, with some person's rights about doing that without consent? Well, I think, once again, we need to prominently place uh, uh, statements when people are entering that facility if that cameras are on and they're being recorded so that they know that. that yeah, I mean, it's one thing to get somebody on a camera. Nobody knows who it is. I mean, it's not doing yeah. a lot of good, even, though, even if it's a great picture. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> okay. We've uh, completed uh, the uh, water and the dewatering improvements at the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Um, the water line replacements are, are completed. Kinsley Construction completed the uh, concrete ramps. Uh, the slider tank replacement is in, pro in process for uh, design work. And everything pretty much else is uh, no problems with any of the, uh, the water line replacement. Do you have anything to add, Donnie? No, we're good. For the engineering or the water or the um, Water report. Do you want to add anything? Oh, no, we're good. I, Don, I have a, I have a question because in uh, the information that Andrew sent, you were down at Summit Grove Campground, and Hi. I guess you tested oh, some yeah. of their lines and so forth. How did how did they stand up? I mean, did you find anything significant? We didn't, in find, we didn't find anything the day we were down there. We did find uh, that they didn't have some valves turned on. Yeah. So once it turns the valve on, then they have some leaks. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> um, but they didn't have anything when the person was out there listening to everything. So, I mean, they still were going to do their upgrading to the yeah. yeah. And that's what they have to do. Right. Um, I mean, you can fix all the leaks you want, but I mean, the, the pipes are shot. They're old. 
Are they still using massive amounts of water? They're not now, no. No? no. Okay. I, I think it's not because they've got it all shut down. Sure. I mean, yeah. if you shut it down, you're not going to use the water. But I, they, they owe us, um, the end of this month, an update on what they're doing for the repairs and maintenance. So mm -hmm. so once we get that, we'll, we'll know better. I, ha I, I have a question on the water, and you could probably know better than anybody. Apparently, I know Keystone is advertising that, I think it's the old parish farm out on 851. Keystone is advertising that they're building houses there. Now that's Shrewsbury Township, but would Shrewsbury Township be using our water? It says houses starting at 550,000. I didn't know what they put wells in. There is no public water out yeah, there. Okay. Would they would they be allowed to tap into our water supply? I would think so. Where? The old parish farm out eight fifty one. It's gonna be called Country Club Overlook. That's not contingent to, for our property, is it? Or is it well is Right for we've, we've issued no permits for them to, to look into our water as, as of this time. Okay, um, here, who, who's in charge of EDUs? Somebody's going to be coming after somebody for EDUs for all those houses out there. Shrewsbury Township doesn't have EDUs. It's either Shrewsbury or it's New Freedom. What's going to happen now when they put another 70, 80 houses out there Plus, we're going to be looking at another development. Again, I'm not looking at the map, but are they con contiguous to New Freedom Borough where the property is? Yes, it's right across 851. It crosses 851. I don't think any of that, no. if, if it's the property that I'm thinking about, I don't think any of that touches Borough property. Yeah, so they would have to go through Shrewsbury It's Borough. real dirt and close. Well, they would have to go through Shrewsbury Borough wastewater pipes, and that they would have to get approval from Shrewsbury Borough to go through their pipes. That's how that works. But they don't have pipes out there. Well, then that's we, what I'm saying. I'm saying we don't need them. I don't think. I think they would have to do something. It's right. It's basically it's across from Kohler Point. It's across the road from Kohler Point. <laughs> if they want, if they yeah, wanted it. If they wanted to put in public sewers and or water, uh, there's a planning module process if they weren't part of a 537 plan, which they probably weren't because it wasn't contemplated then. So there's a planning module process they have to go through. The township has to review and approve it. And then if it's to be New Freedom Borough water and sewer, it's got to come to New Freedom from New Freedom to sign off before it goes to DEP. And that, that's the time they have the discussion about it. But there is a, there's a planning module process that's a state, it's a state process that they would have to follow up there if they want to put in public works or, or even on site because it's going to have to be approved one way or the other. Yeah, even, even if it's septic, they have to get it approved. But they have not come to us to say they want to run through Shrewsbury Borough pipes to get to our plant. So. You're talking about this property with the cemetery on it. Are you talking further down 851? All I know is the old parish farm. The one, the, 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 the there's, there's a road with that name. No, 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 that, that's, that's his that brother. There's two parish farms. <laughs> see, I know you're the one you're talking one. about by the cemetery, that's where Hamilton Overlook is. Yeah. Okay? This is out eight fifth, going out 851 in back of your development. Okay? If you go around the curve, yeah. there's, uh, I think it's Ceiling Road there. Yeah. And then you come okay? If you go out Bowser School, there's those big houses up there. It's back behind there. There's a whole development going in there with houses. I think it said start at 557 that's, bedroom that's houses. That's not our <coughs> Well, they're going to want to buy them from us. Not if, they, not if they've already done the right. development. <laughs> well, they haven't. They're advertising oh, for I see. it. So they it's, haven't even broken ground. No, no. <laughs> but apparently they're planning on it. <coughs> well, they come I, I, I thought maybe somebody knew something I didn't know. Because if they're going to try to tap in our water, we're talking about water. Yeah. You know, we don't want to end up having to buy more water from your water company because yeah, that's no, we would not. We, we, no, it's not that's something. That's 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 that's
we've already discussed about the letters that have gone out. Um, one thing that um, Andrew pointed out was that these letters that go out can become part of a uh, legal, so they're probably not something that we should put out in public, right? Correct. Well, and enforcement notices. Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, Rec. Oh, no, there uh, that's one, uh, one. I think we have a copy of their report, um, which will bring up another situation. Uh, apparently, all the doors, the locks have been changed. That's that's all been fixed. That was a glitch in the system. And we're actually in the process of replacing it. We actually. Late passed out some fobs tonight. It was just, um, you know, we're just trying, you know, we're bringing everything up to speed, and we okay. didn't realize that uh, the locks didn't work that night. So. But is this door going to be locked, or is it going to be kept open? Which door? The council chamber door. Uh, well, that's going to be locked eventually, right? Right this now, it's time that's going to be left open that you can access this facility to get your mail with the fob to get you through that second set of doors if the office is closed. Once everything comes in, depending on what the, what the status is that we get back, that door will then go on to a fob system also like the second set of doors and everything will be accessible with the fob. So those doors are going to be open and we've got a lot of equipment and we've got a lot of personal mail and things that are, are are private and just the council room doors are open. The best of the doors are locked. The doors <coughs> That's are what I'm saying. So Anybody can come in here and look through our mail. mail. Uh, come on. I've been in here and there's nobody there. Somebody's going to the bathroom. You know. Well, I mean, we could keep that door locked until we lock the front doors and anybody who wants to come and get their mail will have to knock on the door and come in through the office area. Okay. Let's do that. Uh, I'm just not comfortable and I don't no, think the rest fine. of you are with the investment we have in equipment, no, mail. I agree. No, I agree. That's you fine. Know. Yeah, it's just, but it's all being upgraded. And, and until we get the FOB system right. in right. for here, that would be, that would yeah. work out. Our, the rest of you that don't have a key, Okay with that because you're not going to be able to. Huh? Even if it's even if it's locked, and then they can but if it's locked, if it's if it's after hours, then that door will be open if it's after hours. Okay, you'll make sure that way your your folks back here will make sure that once the doors out here are locked, this is open because nobody's got none of us have any more keys to this. Well, that's right. It'll have to be until they get it fixed. I mean, right now the system is old. There are no repair parts for it, so that's why it's being upgraded. It just that it just won't work. So once we get the new system in, everything will be fine. But during the interim, that's what we'll do. Make sure. You got a fob? Yes. You got a yes. fob? <laughs> Every you got a fob. Yeah. I think it's uh, I did. I did want to mention that um, I don't. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how to say this, but um, Tanya did not get the uh, the trash for the tr free trash from Penn Waste to run at the third concert. When she got that, there actually was not a third concert. We only had one concert on the books. Um, Penn Waste has specifically requested that that be a free drawing. So. That's what we're going to do, and it's already been advertised as being done at the first. Actually, if we would have known about it, we would have had it sold at all three concerts because that would have been better for the borough. But since we've advertised it's going to be at the first concert, that's what we'll just stick with that. So that's in their uh, report. Did you have any, anything else? Um, I think um, Mary Ann is going to forward to the office. Um, they only had the fact that uh, there was going to be a parade. Andrew didn't want to post it on Savvy Citizen until we had a route and times. Now we know it's going to be begin at 4:30. Um, so 
seconds. We're recording. Maybe people will pick this up. The, um, the parade will begin and stage at the community center. Come to, that's what I was told. Where, did, where were you told? Um, I had read somewhere else that it was going to be on Schaefer again. Well, started, they'll be at, at the yeah, community good. center and, and go, go back to Schaefer. To Schaefer, because you're going to have a lot of fire. Back up and then back down. And then we'll go down Main Street to Broad, left on Broad, past Rudders, to High, up High, and then be complete at the um, Carnival Grounds. The Carnival Grounds will be open early that night so we don't lose the crowd. Before, we always had it at 4.30, the parade was over at 6. The grounds weren't open until 7 or 7.30. This way they're going to open right at 4 o'clock along, or 4, 4 or 4.30, so that uh, people can take advantage of that and we don't lose them. Because that is probably going to be the number one night, Friday and Saturday, for the Lions and they're really looking forward to this fundraiser, let me tell you. You, you know, has the uh, Lions Club either gotten or requested from the carnival vendor a bond to repair the park if there's damage? They said it would be taken care of. I don't know about a bond, but they said it would be taken care of. Did we make the um, lodge get a bond for the car ship? That was just Saturday. I don't think so. Because I was concerned no. about them burning out afterwards and tearing it up. Yeah, Everybody no, was fine. I mean, they said they'll take care of any anything. Mm -hmm. yeah, heavy, heavy trucks. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of big eighteen wheelers and everything else. Yeah, but they've always had a bind for the car. You did? They've always had a bind for the car. I will yeah. go to get to the president. I will call him tomorrow. Okay. I appreciate that. As a matter of fact, I will see him tomorrow because our installation of officers is tomorrow night in the dinner, and I will ask and get back with you to you on Wednesday. Okay. Um, did you want to talk about the um, proposal for the cameras at all? It's next thing. Yeah, maybe we can go over that. Um, so Rick Garvey did come up with a uh, proposal uh, to the CIA crime investigation mm -hmm. alarm uh, company. Um, just a, a lot of information to go over. It's had a couple of pictures here. Um, you guys said that you've seen some of these cameras in, in use. <coughs> the police, our police they department use, use uses them. Okay. The wastewater treatment plant I have seen that we system. own use yeah. the same company. Okay. Now these are updated, newer models of the cameras. Yeah. They're 4K. They're infrared. They're, they're just state yeah. of the art. Well, they're not the best. They're not entirely talk. wireless. They're going to trench cat five cable across the park. Some, yeah, one spot. I thought it was all. Uh, you know, there's one where, spot um, that they're going to have to do that down to the, I think to the parking lot. Oh, uh, yep. Okay, that's all the other ones that are wireless. Yeah, they are. They're, they'll be dish as long as they can get a dish that comes up to this building. So it, it operates on the line of sight yes. type system. Okay. Yes, well, other I'm, than the one. I have a whole bunch of questions about it. Were you, are you done, Ryan? I don't mean well, the, the only other thing I was going to say is, is it's $18,500 for this uh, um, total investment, half down, um, and balance due upon. I thought it was 15. Uh, it's 18 five. And then, it's, okay. um, and then it's $80 a month after that. Yeah, so I, I have some questions about that, what, what exactly that gets you. But also something that's that expensive, I think we need to spend a couple months thinking about and then make that a budget item for the next year. Well, he, he will be here at the next meeting to yeah. answer any questions anybody has. But this, this um, we thought he could be here at this meeting. He couldn't make it. He had other obligations. So it was already on the agenda, so we passed this out. Um, one thing I talked to Andrew Schaefer about, I know we are going to be doing a resurface of the municipal parking lot. I have asked him since we are going to be doing that, and we're asking our folks in town to use the municipal parking lot, especially during 
uh, winter storms uh, to park there. I think we need to invest in additional lighting, LED lighting, because that place is dark at night, and I wouldn't want my wife down there at 10 o'clock at, at night or at 4 in the morning when it's dark and they're mm -hmm. picking up the car after the tennis court. That whole place is lit up by the there tennis are no, court. There are by the tennis court, but the, the parking lot is not. Not to those, down those, down lights, those lights are kind of centralized into the court with two out into the equipment. There's one light that's way down here, and that's the only light, and it only lights this up. I can sit on my deck and watch the drug deals happen in the dark areas. <laughs> so that's what I'm I looking at, putting one right in the center, because that's going to help these cameras to pick up, and that's going to act as a deterrent for the kids that are down there, because I mean, I, I see it three, four times a week. And what, what are you trying to, I guess, I guess we need to say, like, what are we trying to accomplish with the cameras? We're trying to protect a million dollar investment. No, you're not, because a million dollar investment is basically dirt, and, and you're not, you're There's not, not, more you're not dirt there. How much do we, we put $300,000 into the tennis court that we've had to resurface already? Yeah, well, actually, that Donnie said that the, the company that was re fixing the tennis court resurfaced that we didn't really pay for that. I do agree that the tennis court needs protected. But, but, the, but the, the, the bottom line, I mean, I'm, I saw the bid and I looked at it. I mean, I, had, I talked to Donnie and Donnie, I don't, you said there was $2,000 in graffiti type yeah. damage. I also talked to Chief Boddington and he said that we're not going to prosecute kids for graffiti. I mean, you're not. That's just not going to happen. Why? Because you're not going to. You're going. They're 14 years old, and they're going to get a slap on the wrist. I mean, and you're going to spend. Who's well, going to go? They don't do it again. Who's going to go to court to sit with these people, and you know, and and to spend the time at, at investigating? And your 2.8 millimeter camera lens that the that these cameras have. The identification range is less than 50 feet. When you take those, well, even if you look at the pictures that are included, the pictures that are included in there, if, if you look at that and you say, okay, I want to read that license plate, it becomes painfully obvious that you're not going to be able to read a license plate from from more than 50 feet. That's why he's coming to the next meeting. Well, well yeah, and, I, and that's good because you know, I, like I said, they're panoramic. You know. They can move, they can zoom in. Well, who does that? Go Who's on? going to make them move and zoom in? Well, if they're here during the day and, and when kids are down there during the summer. That's not going to happen. Okay. We're not, we're not going to have, this is in Baltimore City. Give me the ability. I live right there. I can do it <laughs> on my iPad. And I can go click, and when there's a kid down there or four kids down there like last week setting off fireworks, I can zoom in, I can click, I, we got a picture. The question I have too, going along with it, Amy, is: the, Is the resolution good enough to identify a person? You know, you can get a picture, and we've had that problem before with cameras. Yeah, we can see there's some individuals out there. We can't identify them. The picture, the, the video quality is not good enough to be able to identify a person, even if you put them in a lineup. Well, in in Baltimore City, they actually have a police officer sitting at a control panel, and they zoom in, and they 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 can do, and they can actually dispatch the police. They can say there's a crime going on yep. over here, yep. but we're not going to do that no. for a park. That's it's right. just not going to happen. You're going to have a so whether or not you can zoom in is almost irrelevant. What the problem is is identification is 50 feet, and you won't, you have four cameras, and most of them are further Five. away. Five cameras. Five. All right, they're still going to all be mostly more than 50 feet. And right, Chief pointed out that Kinsley, uh, they had their um, their cat parked down there, and a window <coughs> was broken. I'm sure. You know, and he said, you know, camera might help with that. And I looked at the thing, and I said, yeah, but there aren't any cameras pointing there. <laughs> and so it, it wouldn't have. Yeah, but you know, the problem the, the problem that you run into is you're spending. Over the course of ten years, between the the, uh, the cameras and everything, you know, you're spending nine hundred sixty dollars a year times ten. That's nine thousand six hundred. 
plus 18.5, and that assumes that you don't need a camera replaced ever. So that's $28,000 to, to try to stop $2,000 of vandalism. Will you be able to even recognize people? I mean, we already talked about this one time. You recall I had my black hoodie on, and I said, this is what you're gonna see, because you're gonna see a guy in a mask and a black hoodie, and you're not gonna be able to identify the person. So, well, I, say, I will, I say I will be more than happy to listen to the guy. I will be more than happy to listen to the guy, but my first blood shot out of the tube is, I'm spending $28,000 over a 10 year period, and I'm not gonna catch anybody. And if I do, the majority of our crimes are slap on the wrist kind of stuff. They're not going to be pro prosecuted where you're gonna get $20,000 in restitution. You don't know because right now they're not getting caught. They're just, they're getting away with it. They're getting away with the drug crimes. They're getting away with the- uh, Well, you're still gonna get away with drug crimes because if they see a awesome. camera up, they're if either If they gonna, see a camera, they're gonna yeah. go someplace else. They're gonna go someplace else. They're not gonna be down there doing and, and, and it. All, and with all due, due respect to Chief Boddington, he said, well, if you give me cameras, I might be able to c catch somebody. And I said, well, Chief, under that set of circumstances, you would want to put cameras all over the town, right? Let's put it on every street because it, it, you know, it would cost a fortune, but you would catch more criminals. Shrewsbury does it. They've got it on their streets. And they've got it at the, at the park too. But I think and you probably have. So it's clever. You would probably have just as. And what did they get out of them? That, that's my only point. I'm, I'm you know, we're asking the people to spend twenty-eight thousand dollars in tax money and. Well, that's, I need to know what I'm that's why I asked the question about parks and recreation. I still am not convinced that we can't use some of that ARPA money for this. Well, Mr. Hobbs just told you you can't, so I'm going to go with him. Well, they're, ch they're changing this every week. Okay, well, if they every change week. it, then, but you know, I, I do want to make a cautionary note here. The money that is out there that we're getting from for COVID relief, it's real money. I mean, just because you get it, you know, if I get a bonus from work, I could go spend it at the casino, I could take a vacation, or I could put it into a retirement account and save money. I would rather save the citizens of New Freedom money on a tax increase, or at least mitigate it or make it less of a tax increase you for know, next year. Use it for that. Well, you are if you if you don't take out the loan or you pay down something that you were going to buy anyway, which we are allowed to do as long as it was purchased after March third. <laughs> so yes, I you know I think that's where you use the money. You don't find things to buy. You really do have to do an analysis and see what am I getting out of this. If you convince me that the citizens well, are getting something Rick, out of Rick, it, I told Rec I would you know I would just. Briefly speak about it because um, you weren't you weren't at the meeting. Um, we wanted you to be involved. We wanted the um, um, who was, what's his name Rick Richard Rick. Richard couldn't be here tonight, so we put that off till next next meeting so that the representative from the company can be here. And I mean, I'll ask him to set up. I Whatever will, he can hear, and then I will come. I will come, we, I will come with an open mind, but I'm, and you're going to have it's twenty-eight thousand dollars, and you know they're, they're going to have to convince me that they're going to be preventing an awful lot of, of, of uh, damage for twenty-eight thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars in ten years, Don. He said, of taking the graffiti off. That's that's we we would lose twenty six thousand dollars under that scenario. Over the over the years, that was it. That was because the the neighborhood stopped going down and scrubbing them at once a week. We used to go down and and scrub those every week. The graffiti off those the old equipment. Twenty eight thousand dollars to try to stop graffiti, and you're not going to stop it. People will people will still. Right, Harry Love Sally on the sliding board, and, mm -hmm. and that's just. But I'll wait. We'll see. I, I, I think we have to respect the, you know, the, the money that's already been put into there, and try not to see it destroyed. Or no if one, it is destroyed, no make somebody. If, if people account. were destroying things, I would agree with you 100. percent But no one has destroyed anything. No one has done anything, other than. 
than a couple of times they put graffiti on, which we took off. I mean, there, no one is destroying any park equipment. Or mainly, any. mainly because we've got people in the neighborhood that are calling the police every time something happens, and they're showing up, and they're getting the kids off the basketball court. They're getting the kids off the tennis courts with the bicycles, with uh, uh, with the skateboards. Mm -hmm. You know, the ones that are down there breaking the equipment, the picnic tables that we happen to catch because there are good citizens that are taking pictures and reporting it to the police that they can catch them. Kim, were they prosecuted for the damage? Yes, they were. Misdemeanor, felony, they had to pay restitution? They had to pay restitution, and I'm pretty sure they got a, they were cited. Because Chief Bonington said he would not go after misdemeanor. Well, I don't know if it's a misdemeanor, but I know I had to, because I, per I personally had to file a report with the police because I witnessed it and I had the pictures of it. Okay, let's wait until next month and see what, see what the guy says. Okay. Um, I think that brings us to the resolutions. Appropriation uh, committees. Did I miss any committees? Uh, unfinished business, we have the council chambers, uh, audio, video, system parts, and I think Inga had something about that. Yes. Um, okay, what, what we, we were talking about, what, $22,000 or $25,000? I don't remember exactly what the, uh, the amount was. I gave a lot of thought, just like you're thinking about this camera business, and... I feel at this time, you know, with, with the Zoom, at Glen Rock and uh, Shrewsbury has the Zoom, and uh, it's worked, you know, that we use that, we use them. Um, I would be in favor of it if we used, and here we go, our poor money. Because I think we could probably use could you really? our money. I think we could because Hallelujah. That, is Hallelujah. For, that is for our health. That is for health. It's uh, we already know that we're going to probably, you know, they're already forecasting that in October, November, we're going to have another surge. Could you could have another evening. variant? I think everybody needs to, you know. We had people. I know I saw on Facebook tonight. Somebody was saying they couldn't make it to the meeting. This would give them an opportunity to come to the Zoom meeting and participate. See? So, under those, under so those I'm in favor of this twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> oh, because. Do you see my point? Because we've had the COVID. Things are slowing down. Water is going up. All the expenditures here. You know, when I go to my church, I get, you know, the street and everything, they get me. So I just couldn't see spending 22000 or 20000 you know, for that at this time. But the ARPO thing, that would be a good thing, wouldn't it? What, Annie, what, what, what will this... <laughs> what will this? I have hearing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's all right. I can that. We're not talking about these two large screen TVs here, are we? Is this yes. Yeah. Yes. That's what we're talking yeah. about. Yes. Yeah. See, yeah. I, I have a I have a problem with bang for the buck on that. What? How does that help anybody if if we've got a screen that somebody here is going to look at or council people are going to look at? If somebody wants to look at it from home, it's one thing, but. My understanding is that I don't I don't see how well, that how that helps. I'm not sure why we need two. I you know I think that yeah, we're I think one, one, I think we one I think one one out there. Well, one but I think else. if you put it right there, the people here yeah. can look at it. I mean, the and really, really the only purpose to it is so that you can look at the person that you're talking to. Correct. So if so yeah. if I'm. Um, yeah, and presentations. Yeah. It could be used for, you know, you could show slides. The guy to that night, David, he could have put his uh, slides up on, on that screen, you know. If, for if, that's, if that's the case, because we're talking about one that everybody can see, oh, yeah. and, you know, yeah. it's not entertaining. Yeah, I was going to bring percent. that up. We didn't that's, need to. I mean, that's a little different. Then it seems to me they have to revise this quote for that because we're not talking about the same thing anymore. Yeah, but I think that we can, we can uh, approve and not to exceed. <clears throat> You know, we even talked about the possibility of us getting our own TVs. You can buy a 70 or 75 inch, inch screen TV now for $500 and under. So they're, they're looking at what, $7,000 I believe in, 
equipment and the rest of it's in labor. Yeah, um, but, but, I, but I, don't, I don't think the TV is, is the TV is a, a small part of it. Well, we were looking, one of them was looking at an 80 some inch TV. We don't need 80 some inch. Yeah, no. yeah. Every day. But I think if you put it right there, right there, I think most people would be able to see that. Council would be able to see it. Most of the people in the audience would be able to see it. So I'm thinking one TV would be fine. And then um, that saves 500 bucks. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. 500 bucks is 500 bucks. Mm -hmm. so, good. So I, that's that's what I that's what I would I would it's, yeah respect your one TV. your decision. One TV. And, and, yeah. yeah, I think I I would. And I am correct that we probably use the money for that, right? You know, I don't think we want to hear that, probably. That, that at the time you want to decide what you would like to, and just research it to ensure that it fits. I, I agree with you that if you're coupling in the fact that it's going to be used for Zoom technology so that everyone can see a person that's participating by Zoom in the case of yeah. a health pandemic, whatever, you're getting a lot closer to being right. authorized. So we can kind of phrase it. I'm going to say we could probably. Word, word it somehow. Can we word it? Can word you make the motion to? Now just, I'm going to make the uh, motion. Uh, yes. Do it only if you can pay for it out of oh, ARPA. Yeah. I mean, sure. If yeah, I was going to be if I need to well, invest not, twenty thousand dollars, I'd do it on the playground. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Seriously. Yeah. And I was going to make that motion that we do it if we get the ARP, you know, if, if we get the money. But we, we'll the, get our the money. solicitors we'll said get the money. we have to wait to see if we get the money. Yeah. I I think. Well, let, let's put it this way. So I can I can tell a story now if, if you really want me to. But, you know, we had you know whenever I was president of SYC, people would come to us and they would say, "I'm directing you to use this money for football." And it's like, okay, <laughs> we'll use it for football, but that means I don't have to give football more money this year because I'll I guess I'll spend it on baseball because you already had this directed donation. So I my my point of the story is. I'm sure that we could figure out a way to take the money from here that would be an alloc something that we could allocate and put it over here and then spend the money that we're, the, this money differently. So I'm, I, I am, I would yeah. almost guarantee that. Okay, so I can make the motion that we look into that, right? Well, this is already a quote. I mean, the quote's gonna go away if we don't approve it tonight, basically. Which is okay. We could get another quote. We could ask but them to extend the quote. Go away. You know, but you that's know, good. it's up to you. I mean, I. Okay, let's I would be happy to entertain away. a motion to, to have a not to exceed of. Not to exceed. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's the total with the labor is twenty two eight thirty eight. Not to exceed. I think it was twenty two thousand something. Yeah, twenty two eight thirty eight. Okay, tw yeah. So, I make a motion. Yeah, sure. Sure. So I mean if you probably if you did a uh, not to if you made a motion for twenty two five that would probably Okay, work. I make the motion for twenty two not to exceed not to exceed King, is your motion still contingent upon where the money comes from? Using ARPA? Yes, definitely, yeah, definitely. The money has to come from ARPA. And I'll Otherwise, second it. Three second well, again, again, if you specify that the money specifically has to come, it has to then come you're going to have to wait. And, and that's okay. We can let this quote expire, and then we can get another quote. I don't know if it'll go up, down, or sideways, or you know, it could just stay the same. So I would, I would think. Um, I, I, I mean, I, it, it, it's not a motion really to do anything because we're going to have to wait to see if, if the ARP, ARPA money actually, you know. Can we find out something by next meeting, July, July meeting? Well, it's a good possibility. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, I mean, so the money should be here, so yeah, the money we should, should have all the guidelines. Should we have the money then with the guidelines? Mm -hmm. so, so I make the motion that that we have a resolution of this problem by next by July's meeting. Yeah, I think I think probably, the, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think probably the appropriate motion would be to.
table this till the July meeting and ask for I'll a 30 day extension. All right. Unquote. I'll table it till the July meeting. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. I have a, I have a quick question. Oh, sure. You say something about a 30 day extension on the quote. Uh -huh. And so we're going to ask him that in the motion. Right. I'll have the hand, when Andy gets back, he can call them and see. I, I think I think they'll probably do it. I, I can't imagine that they wouldn't unless something strange happened. Yeah. So we could extend it into July. The 30 days would be right. into that exactly. We still would have the same quote. Yeah, yes. that's good. And that's could good. we also say that we want the quote to reflect that we only want one television? Right. Yes. One television. One television. One television. One television. And you can even make it 20,000. Well, we said, you know, yeah, two, Andy two, said two, last time two. if we want, we can get our own TVs. Yeah, they might even want. But just make sure they have got some up to price. You know, I just don't think the citizens should have to pay for that. I feel very strong about that. When we don't know how many people are going to be involved, That's exactly like I said at the last meeting, um, there were there were two people at Shrewsbury's meeting zoomed in. There were four <laughs> on Glen Rocks zoomed in. Yeah. That's a lot of money to pay to for spend four this people time. or two people that are going to yeah. take advantage yeah. of it. Well, it's you're, it's it, kind it, of hit or miss. It is, it, but you know the other side of that too is is if you have an issue that's important to people and you have. 100 people who would really like to zoom in, you know, I, I think it, it kind of makes it worth it. And we're, we're obligated, I think, to provide as much information to people as we can, you know. I mean, so this, this does that for them. So, okay, so it's tabled for a month. Okay. Okay. Um, Next thing is the Kohler Point traffic study. Uh, what Andrew is recommending is that an actual traffic speed study uh, be completed. Um, the traffic study that was the speed trailer by Southern Regional Police doesn't, um, doesn't allow us to set a speed that would be enforceable. So um, what he's suggesting is uh, that council give him authorization to obtain a written proposal from traffic resource group which I guess is pretty much who everybody uses yep. for their speed traffic studies yep. yeah, for the streets within Polar Point. I'll, I'll make a motion to, to and do that. Because yeah, I, just, I have a question. Two questions, actually. Have we released the bond on Polar Point? Oh, I don't think we have. There's still a small bond. I, I thought that the contractor developer would still be responsible yeah. For that they, now, they, 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 that would not be in the bond. The that would bond not be in the bond. Public improvements and a traffic study would not be included in this. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, stormwater. Okay. All right. Well, well the other stormwater. thing is, when I was at the police commission meeting, oh, uh, I guess this month or last month, they um, Shrewsbury has a certified person, yes. Brian Schweitzer, Schweitzer. who. Uh, does this he is certified he does it for mm -hmm. Shrewsbury and Shrewsbury Township and they're willing to let us use him at $45 yes. an hour now how much are we going to pay for this other company that we could that, isn't this part of our intergovernmental commission the the um, agreement that we're trying to work together with we loaned equipment to Glen Rock you know and they paid a flat fee and this is if this guy's qualified. Yeah. You, yeah, you have to just meet one requirement. Yeah, so many, there's many different people that can do it. And he's qualified to do it. Very he's, few he's municipal officials have the ability to do that. Some police officers are qualified to do it. So he's got the qualifications. Yeah. 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 Came up at the police and, they, and they'd like to use our street sweeper next year yeah. and they said that there's a possibility if we want to barter, they'll take the forty five dollars mm -hmm. off of how many, yeah. hour, how many hours is a study? I don't know, but well, we could we could yeah, ask you. Yeah, it's a lot of hours. I mean, I don't. I think you set it up though and walk away from it. I don't yeah. think. Yeah, I don't yeah. think you have come to back there and, with it. Yeah. And I can get a hold can of you, Brian. Can you go ahead and make I can get a hold of Brian and see how long will it take? Yeah. You don't have to do the whole development, I don't think. Do you? If They're you just looking mainly at the one.
one street that goes is a cut through from 851 to Front Street. And, and that'd be something that Brian would know because t in order to have an enforceable speed limit, you have to have a traffic study. And I don't know mm -hmm. if you stand and say of four streets I can do two and then you know come up with the number. Well, standard no. residential is 25 miles an hour, correct. correct? You're correct. Yeah. Okay, so we want to make sure that that What's the name? What is the name of that street? Logan. Logan. We want to make sure that Logan, which is the real problem, um, has a cert, has a street study done, and we can put that in at 25 miles an hour and be able to um, uphold that. Now they're looking at the, the radar bills supposedly going through. Oh yeah. The House and Senate. Yeah. That's that's. Well, that's I, I would I would entertain a motion to get a quote from um, Brian, Brian at Shrewsbury Borough. I'll yep. give it tomorrow. I second. Okay. I have a uh, motion and a second to get a quote from Brian from Shrewsbury Borough to do a study on Logan uh, with the intent of putting up a speed limit sign. Don't you want speed limits throughout the entire town? Well, we do. Yeah. 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 But I think I think that. So you'd have to do every street to put it. Well, that's, that's what I want Brian. Brian will know the standard. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you know, I think if, if you did the main, the main cut through, through street, if all the side streets should be the same. Should, they're well, residential, I, so I, they're I'm not going to jump to that conclusion. Okay, yeah. Okay. That's for life. So, and then let's, let's find out what Brian yeah. says. Yeah. Well, Wade said yeah. it's 25, right? Yeah. Wade, residential is 25. I would like I'd like it, it should be done because if there's a speed right. problem over yep. there then you have to have something that's enforceable regardless yeah. of who's gonna do it, how it gets look, done. Look at the uh, yeah. Alright. So we're good with that? Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Marsha. Oh, Just thank you. another discussion <laughs> with regards to that development. Who has to put in, who has to paint the yellow lines? Did Danny go? Do you, do you have to? Because it's, yes. it's a neighborhood. Most, most neighbors I don't think have paint the yellow lines. lines. Mine doesn't. Mine doesn't. Art doesn't. Yours doesn't? doesn't. Yours doesn't? doesn't? No. Well, you don't have sidewalks. The Constitution does all yeah. up High Street. Yeah. They do. Well, we got a question. I, about that. I live directly across from that development, and the it, it concerns me for the safety because there is no crosswalk to yeah. go across that development from the trail. Um, the majority of the people yes. walk in my yard that's on the other side of the trail up to Logan and they cross over. They cross diagonally usually across that road yeah. and it's little kids on bikes and I mean a, a, a lot, a lot of people. I mean all the people that go into Summit Grove, all those people cross over there at McCall Avenue and the little picnic table and there is no crosswalk. I got shot down by Andrew when that crosswalk over there. Well, you know, a lot of times a crosswalk slows people down too. I mean, so I, I, it's, I, I didn't know if there's a safety issue if they could do something about that because it just it concerns me that I'm going to see somebody get hit because I mean they, the little kid they cross diagonally across it's the most. I was just in Ocean City and that's one of their big things is no jaywalking and that's exactly what the people are doing in Front Street. Believe me, they're not going 30 mile an hour down Front Street when they're going down into town or they come down to that hill. At 50 miles an hour, so. Front Street, they don't do. Front Street wouldn't be included in the traffic study, right? Because it's no. outside. Yeah. No, no. But it's a problem, I agree. Well, we actually dropped. But you can still put a crosswalk. Yeah. This is something I thought I should bring up. So. No, yeah, no, no it's good. I agree. It's, it's been brought up before, and we were looking yeah. at doing there. We were looking at doing um, High Street. We were looking at Franklin, and we were looking at Maine. Now, we are putting major crosswalks in. I, I don't know. Currently, we're in. They're in. Doing, 
Okay, they're in. Well, I mean, they'll be in after the Right, they have to put them in as they paid because they have to set the material. It's not just painted. The material gets set into the uh, uh, macadam right. and then, you know, it's, it glows in the, you know, the, the way street lights. They they but the they're not doing they High stop. Street yet. High Street is like a second on the agenda. And now you're saying maybe up at Logan we can take a look at that, even if we just get reflective paint yeah. and put they, that on. It costs nothing. They stopped, they stopped the sidewalk at Logan. They didn't bring it down in front so the, the, the people could come out of the development and walk down on the other side where the development side is, and they cross over to McCullough. So they really, uh, they're okay. crossing over onto my private property, which, like I said, I'd rather see the people walking by grass than walking the road. Yeah. Um, but it, it, it seems like the, the crosswalk, the sidewalk should come down and go to McCullough and have a crosswalk come across to McCullough. Seems like what would be the safest way for the people that are leaving, Grove, coming out of Summit Grove and out of the development. And I mean, there are a lot, believe me, a lot of people that come across there. So. Summit Grove is using our park more and more every mm -hmm. year. They're down there. Yeah, well, with, with the, the train. Trains, yeah, yeah, with the train coming through and they, yeah. you know. Yeah. All right, I, I will take an action to talk to Andy about okay. the crosswalk at Logan when he gets back. And hi, if you would. Mm -hmm. Even if that's just painted. Yeah. Okay. Um, what did I do? Oh, there it is. Okay, uh, the next item I have that you should have in your packet um, it's a resolution 2021 20, whatever it's going to be, mm -hmm. and it appoints uh, Andrew Manker for a term uh, through December of 21, uh, Joni Mason, December 31 to 20 of 22, uh, William Taylor, December 31 to of 23, and Rodney Romack as an alternate for December 31st, 2021 for the uh, Zoning Commission. I'll make that motion for resolution number 21. Whatever, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Second, okay. then. Okay, I have a first second. Any discussion? Uh, what are I, the I'm sorry. I have a question. When are you going to reaffirm the planning hearing board? We're, we are. We're doing that too. Yeah, that'll be that'll be probably next next uh, meeting. Yeah, we're trying to catch up because apparently we left some holes and I, I hadn't realized it until um, okay. yeah. really about a month ago. Are there requirements you have for be, members? You have to be a citizen. You have to be a citizen. That's all. That's pretty much it. Yeah. You, no courses. No. No, but I mean, it's you know, I mean, if they want, you know, basically, yeah. it's it's looking at. Maybe you know, that's maybe that's the other one. Yeah. That, that requires courses, I believe, doesn't it? One year yeah. on. We we take them, but on our own. It's not required. Yeah, you it's take them required. on your own, but yeah, it's not that it even required. that's not required. Yeah. But you, on zoning, you basically okay. you look at the the items yeah. that are required, and as long as they check off all the boxes, you have got them. I didn't know. Okay. I, have a, I have. I don't think I finished. Uh, I have. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. My vote is aye. Personnel committee uh, reviewed uh, the personnel manual uh, for, uh, um, I guess, actually, Ann had written it some time ago, and uh, Andrew pulled it out and revised it, dusted it off. We reviewed it. It, it, did, a lot, it did a lot of good things. It uh, standardized uh, our personnel policies across all of the departments. Uh, it also talks about comp time and sets some guidelines for that. Um, it's it's a good it's a good manual. Um, it's in your packet. I don't know if anyone's had a chance to peruse it, but uh, we have a resolution to uh, for setting the policies and procedures and establishing job descriptions for persons employed by the Borough of New Freedom. And it is also 20 21 dash something or another. <laughs> Yeah. So we need a motion. 
motion to adopt our new personnel. I'll make a motion that we adopt the um, personnel. But uh, no, no, no. Wait a minute. I have a question about that. Um, I was concerned, you being a council member and so forth. How legal is it? Everybody that gets employed by the borough should they not come before the entire council? No. Who makes it? No, uh, well, I have a paper here. If you would like to read it. Uh, it was done by, you know, a, a study of the state and so forth. To ECO. That we ECO, yes. Is that still stand, is that standard for, for us? Take it was ECO. It says ECO, that any, it any, ECO. any, any ECO employee three, must ECO be. ECO 360. Any employee must be approved Any employee account. should You're come. Employee. But, but, but that is what happens. But whether you have interviews or whether you have a subset of the, the group that reviews the applications, we have to, as a council, approve every applicant, every new employee. You, you had all the information when we had from Hiram and Shaper. We have a new everybody. employee back here, nobody even knew about it. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. Right. Right. I, I, I don't have it says we can't add, that add employees. employees. We can't something. add employees mm -hmm. unless. I'm not. I'm more than happy to look into this. See, that's what I'm saying. When you say E360, is that the borough code, code that is that's one? Code. That's the yeah. Yeah. And, and and I'm just wondering because. Can you pass it? On? Yeah. And and just be aware that the personnel man. Yeah. Is the frank? It, it's the terms and conditions of employment. It's the policies. It's a lot of different things. I guess. You know, once again, today is the first time I've seen this. Does it say who hires? Is it something that's contrary to what's being provided? Does it say that the that the borough manager or administrator has the authority to? It does. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Right, and council has approved, just like yeah. what Inga right. said, we've approved for him to hire people to levels. That's that's how it works. That's how we have it set up. Right, but the way I read it is the borough manager, his or her designate, or both will determine the most suitable candidate. Upon a council approval, the borough manager will appoint the, the employee to the borough. Because it doesn't appear as if the borough manager has unfettered authority to, to hire. It has the unfettered authority to interview and go through that process. But then the borough manager um, will, and will determine the most suitable candidate. Upon council's approval, the borough manager will appoint the employee. So this clearly contemplates that, that your, your new policy that you'll be approving is consistent with it. That says that it's borough council that has the authority. The council has a final right. word. Is, right. there, is there someone that represents council? For instance, if the council president is consulted representing the council, if we are uh, uh, no, 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 uh, council president. No, it's council yeah, approval. Yeah, council yeah. president. But I, but my, my, question, my question would be, do we change this to match what the, uh, what the what this says? Because this yeah. says that the borough manager can, can hire with council approval. Which is the way the council approval. That's what this says. That's what it the no, same class with the enlarging the staff. Right. No, that what what it says is Andy can go out and hire people to replace working staff. That's what this code says. Mm -hmm. The the personnel <coughs> manual does not match the code. You're correct. That would be right. Yeah. yeah. Other question? So I would suggest so we, we change the personnel manual yes. to match the code. That, that that is what I'm getting at. Right. No, that's so you agree with yeah. me. I agree with you. Yeah. So we ought, we ought to you know we ought to do that. Well, we're taking it away from the borough council that way, right? Right. Well, well, I mean, well you're not taking it anyway because the no. current code says, says that the exists. manager has no. the authority to, to the hire the replacements but not enlargements. Right. Because the position has already been budgeted. That's good. That's a good place. Yeah. I think that was your. Do we have yeah. more yeah. discussion? Right. 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 Let me we'll just. Discuss. You're gonna have to give me a minute. That's all right. Yeah. Ryan, you remember where it says talks about two levels to hire? Uh, not off the top of my head, but I do remember at least one one yes, place in yeah. here. So in other words, like I said, Donnie is being replaced. Well, something about the interim manager and me, if he's hiring a worker, it would be Donnie and the borough manager. Well, all right, I think we could say, um, we could change the one sentence to mean the borough manager will appoint the employee of the borough consistent with uh, the two-level policy of management policy. Might have been right, right above that same page, page seven, number yeah. three. Oh, uh, the, the borough manager, uh, his or, or her, does me or both will review and screen all applicants and determine which they believe to represent the most qualified applicant. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's the same thing, though. Screening and hiring will be completed by two levels. Of, uh, so it's actually number three of this page. Two level management policy, and then number three. <laughs> All right. I. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I had called here. Of course, Andy Schaefer isn't here this evening and uh, so I guess we will just have to kind of do that for the next meeting. I'd ask him for a borough code and I, in mind I had if you have a borough, there is such a thing as a borough code, is there not? It's online. It, it, you know, no, um, no, you, you didn't ask for the borough code, you asked for the bylaws. The bylaws, the bylaws, I'm sorry, the bylaws. It, there, is, there are no bylaws. It's, there are no there bylaws. There is the code of, code of ordinances for the borough that are at the, the book of all of the ordinances adopted by the, by the borough. And then you have the borough code, which is a set of regulations, a statutory set of regulations 
that are applicable to every single borough in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So, you know, we're really dictated by two things. The borough code that's right. applicable to everyone, and then our ordinances that we've adopted that are specific to New Freedom Park. And, and so typically when you think of bylaws, yeah, that's somewhat the uh, I sort of like to yeah, it says something about bylaws. I mean, I would it's like to kind of see, see that in writing. Go ahead, Marshall. Who did Victoria Wall replace? That was a position for a long time ago. Yeah, it was yeah, a while ago. Can't even remember. It was before me. J.D. Goodley. Victoria Wall replaced she is a billing clerk now that we had an opening for how long? I'm not a clerk. We're, we're trying to staff to the point where we can take care of everything that needs to be done. I'm we're just asking you. We're a new, a new uh, borough website. We're doing the Savvy Citizen. Uh, Wade is doing more on the enforcement of codes for the mayors and through our property maintenance management. I'm just asking if the borough ever voted on hiring that individual or approving that replacement. The, the position has been empty for a while. The, he was directed to hire somebody for the position, yes. By whom? By me. But the council has to vote on that, not the council president. It's it's not. It, no, they don't. Not, that's what we're saying. Under the two, go ahead. Wait, wait one second. Under the two level in the personnel manual, which is what we're trying to prove here, that is, that he, he can replace people and he can hire people as long as it's not above. But the, it, wait, I, I guess just one ordinance. clarification that when, when that person was hired. The code of ordinances that was in place said that the manager has the authority to replace people but not a large staff. So that, that's what was in place at the time that person was hired. So, you know, let's not look to what's going to be. You know, the personnel manual. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm, I'm going by the, the ordinance on the borough site for the borough manager position. And I, he was not allowed to hire people without the council voting on it. I'm sorry, I, I didn't follow. Here, that. under that code, specific powers and duties of the manager: hiring, discharging employees. He shall hire, and when necessary for the good of the services, shall discipline, suspend, or discharge any employee under his supervision, provided that prior approval of the council shall be obtained before enlarging the staff. Go down okay. another point, or A or B, on that, and it says that. Uh, there cannot be an increase in staff, an enlargement of staff. Yeah. We're, we're not enlarging. We're replacing a person who was on the books, and we put a person in that in a part-time position, and that's what we did. If With you would like to write position. up a formal complaint and submit it to Borough Council, you're more than welcome to. I'm just trying to understand. Well, I, th I think I can't explain it any better than that. Mm -hmm. There was a person on staff who quit. We needed a person. We replaced that person so that we can run Savvy Citizen, update our new borough web pages, and continue with the ordinances and the property maintenance code. That's why we needed that person. It's a lower level person. It's not. No, I'm not. I'm not know. arguing that. I'm arguing the process. That's what I'm. I'm and the so borough council just told you is what not. What the process was, so we didn't we didn't violate any processes in the process of hiring this person. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Okay. I'm sorry. Wasn't that also because of the the billing coming back from the bank? Yes, yeah, so and that was actually another part of it too. Thank you. Okay. That uh, the People's Bank quit doing the billing for us, so that led to the fact that we needed to replace the person who had left because People's Bank no longer collects the billing for the borough. So that was a, a fourth thing that we needed the person for. Okay. Anything else? With regard to personnel manual, well, yeah, yeah, I'd like to see 
page nine taken out. That organizational chart I don't feel is legal and as someone would say is infirm. <laughs> yes. infirm. Is infirm. This is the same organizational chart that we have in our current personnel manual. So this is really but not it's never been a change. Coded on. I don't understand how you can go against the borough code by putting the council president above borough council and having borough council, the, the, the council president in charge of borough council and the mayor and everybody else. It says in the borough code, council president basically is the person that runs the council meetings and has no other authority. That's right. Well, the manager reports to the to the council. To president. the council? No, to the council, not the council president. To the council. I, I guess it, there's. I look at that chart, and there, although there's three boxes there, yeah. I don't really. It looks like the borough, the manager is reporting to borough council, the mayor, and the council president. And maybe I'm not a. I I, don't, I, I mean I'm sure. You know, if there's an organizational chart, there's a lot the more chart. involved with the mayor. There's EMS. There's fire. Yeah. There's you know. Well, there's a, a lot more involved with borough council too. I mean, it's yeah. not you know. Well, it's it's, it's all there. It's, Committees it's just, and it's boards. Just, it's supposed to be the structure right. of. of Basically, but that's not the structure operations. according to the borough code. Are we able to see what's going on? Oh, okay. um, I said, are we able to see what's going on? I don't know what's going on. Can I make a suggestion? There, these gentlemen have been waiting this entire three hours. Yeah, I'm can sorry. Can you maybe jump to them so that they can go home? Oh, they are D, I think. Mm -hmm. Let's look into this. Mm -hmm. All right, why don't we table the personnel manual for a minute? David. Why don't we, why don't we table it until David. Andy's here? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, he's not even you know, here and he wrote it. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we should table it until he's here. Table it until right. July. You think? All right. Yeah. I make a motion. I make a motion that we, that we table it till July. We don't. We don't need a motion. We don't need a motion table. for that. Yeah. Okay, just do it. Yeah, we're tabled. For, okay, that takes care of that. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Mike. You want to go to the more? It doesn't matter to me. I've been sat through many of these, so it doesn't matter to me. You're up till three in the morning anyway. Exactly right. So. Okay. Um. The, f the first item is to consider waiving the requirement for a traffic impact study for the expansion of Eden properties at 302 Pleasant Avenue as noted on the final land development plan approved June 12th of 2006. Now this land development plan includes a building which you're going to actually let sit idle and it's actually going to create less traffic because you're not going to be carting stuff to Crescent. It's just going to stay on site. Well, let, let me explain what we do. A lot of people don't understand, even know what we do over there. Um, so, um, I've eaten gold company on the corner of Pleasant Avenue and Constitution. Um, we, uh, we basically built the plastic injection molds for the medical industry for a lot of the OEMs in the medical industry, concentrating on uh, med device manufacturing sector. Um, so, uh, we're, we've got some growing pain, but, but more importantly, we have... Uh, we have to store a lot of things off site now because of uh, lack of room in our existing shop. We're not, uh, we, we actually build the molds, but then they want to do some automation, and the barn automation, that kind of thing. We've got to bring some machines in. We just got to store them until we're ready to, uh, it's like the be marble machines, and then we just got to add the automation, some of this stuff, and then take them off site. It's just a simple storage facility, be uh, cold storage. We'll still be in our existing building uh, as of now. Add to um, to help some of these OEMs out. Uh, so, so the big thing is with the there's they can't find people either. Um, they can't find uh, they lost a lot of people uh, through retirement and they're coming to smaller shops to to help these big corporations out. And we're fortunate enough to be in New Freedom, Pennsylvania, uh, where a lot of people say with American Insulator that's where plastic injection already started. So I was here uh, I pretty much born and raised in Freedom, my life. I wanted to start a business in New Freedom, worked here all my life, lived here all my life, so I'd um, like to keep it here, you know. So.
so basically now we have some storage uh, over here at the uh, at the uh, the old candy factory over here. So we're running back and forth all the time. So basically, it's, it's we're not doing anything differently. It's just that we can store everything on site at that point instead of running off, you know, keeping off site. So are you are you saying you generate less traffic? Right. Yes, correct. Okay. Correct. Not adding more people, it's just generating less traffic for running back and forth all the time. And it's, we're not doing anything differently in our existing building than what we're doing now. It's just, uh, um, just, we have, um, just, it's just another, what's more machining when you basically just do machining, uh, but it's just another aspect of, of another portion of the, of the mold with end of arm towing automation, that kind of thing. Does anyone have any questions about that? So we're wait, we would be waiving a traffic study because the traffic oh, is actually going to be down. Traffic study. I mean, you can have less traffic. Why right. would you want to do a study now? Yeah. Right. Very good. I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? Can I just ask one question? The action item on the agenda is to waive a traffic impact study, but there appears from some internal notes in reporting that there was also a discussion concerning the environmental impact that's study. That's separate. That's separate. There was, that's there was two separate. notes on there. So, oh, okay. So Thank you. Mr. Hollis, let me, let me explain yep. something. No, so, fine. back when we, uh, we uh, bought that corner uh, and developed it and, and did a, a building for existing for existing building. We did uh, enough engineering to put a separate building on. At that time, we had no idea what was going in there. Council didn't under, know what was going in there. I didn't know what was going in there. I didn't know if we were gonna uh, need it for our own sake one time. Uh, never in a million years, I thought in seven years, we need more space right now. I just I just don't move in from, from a 3,000 square foot building into 10,000. I just never knew we, you know, we'd, uh, we'd need another space like this. So at that point, nobody knew what was going on. There's all these rumors going around. There was a sheet, so it was going to be a Red Robin, going to be a strip club, all sorts of things. So yes. you just don't, there was all, all this, you know, drama and energy. And uh, so nobody knew what was going on, what was going in there. So everybody was worried about what was going on. And that's why these conditions were put in place. I, and I only, I just didn't want you to walk out today and not get the relief you were looking for. So that's why I raised Sure, so, I yeah, appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, no, I appreciate it. You wouldn't you need so many buildings if you didn't have so many cars. <laughs> <laughs> However, that was 15, th this whole thing is 15 years old. And uh, do we have any, was there an approval for this development in writing? Do we have anything in writing? Well, there's, it's this on whole the, thing it, is 15 years old. It's on the plan. Oh, but it is on there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's a building that was shown on the plan, but it didn't it is, have, it didn't it have is, a okay. use. So the water and all the environmental yeah. stuff had already been done to add that building. Okay. So do you want to add E to the motion or do I, why don't we finish out yeah. what yeah. the motion that we have? So we currently have a motion on the table to uh, waive the requirement for a traffic study plan. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? My vote is aye. Uh, I think Ryan second. Yeah. Uh, Ryan second. Sorry. Okay, so the next item is consider waiving the requirement for an environmental impact study for the expansion of the property, which again, it's already noted on the final land development plan and it was already approved in 2007. I'll make a motion that we waive the requirement for an environmental impact study for the expansion. No seconds. No seconds. Any other discussion on that? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And that is on. Thank you. Thank you for waiting. Sorry. Yes, no problem. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Tom. Probably should do something different. I was we're we're just going to say, should we put yeah. new business, or especially if there's going to be a lot of new business, should well, we put that earlier? We probably meeting? should at yeah. least put new business that has people involved in it so that they could yeah. get, you know, I think we'll 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 do that. Yeah. Um, Sorry for being getting big. <laughs> we'll call it people first. Sounds good. Okay. Um, okay. So you, do you want to uh, write a, uh, a new word chart for in there? I can. There's already one in the. Uh, 
that's fine too. Yeah. Um, in the code, yeah. I'll just Perfect. make a copy of that. Because yeah. that really goes down through EMS and everything. Okay. Yeah. Can Which you, I think yeah. if we're going to include it, can, can you be yeah. yep. get that to me? Yep. I'll, just, I'll just make sure it gets in there. Yep. Okay. Um, this is item C. This is a resolution of New Freedom Borough Council to assure current and future New Freedom Borough citizens that Council shall always support and defend their rights, the rights of our citizens, including if not limited to the right to keep and bear arms. Okay. You want me to read the whole thing? No? Okay. Um, all right. I'll make a motion that we approve. Okay, I have a motion for approval. Inga seconds. Yes. Is there any discussion? I've got some um, serious concerns about the legality of making a, a law. It, it, it's, it's, I, I changed it from an ordinance to a resolution. It's really just our opinion. So it's a non-binding non resolution? Yeah. Pretty much. Okay. The only thing, the only thing that it does for us is, if if something comes along down the pike, uh, we can say that we don't want to use our funding of the police department to, um, and, and other areas have done that too. You know, you want to use the funding of your police department for um, actions that violate actions the that would, would, would violate the Second Amendment or the rights of the people. Even if they're enforcing. State law? I think most of the sheriff's departments and private um, private municipality um, police departments have refused to support um, laws that violate the Second Amendment. In their opinion? In their opinion. Is, is that a legal opinion? Is it that is, a legally it binding? Is, it is not. Mm -hmm. It's a resolution. That's what I'm saying. That's That's right. Anything other than, like, I, I support anybody's right to carry whatever firearm you want. I don't have a problem with people legally owning firearms. I, I just have a problem coming up with anything that might go against any kind of state or federal federal law. That's why we changed it from a, an ordinance to a resolution. Okay. We didn't want to have a, a law on the books that would violate state law. And I believe state law is in the middle of passing a new, um, so a new law that there is no requirement for a concealed carry permit. Anybody, right. as, as long as you're not crazy, well, you're not you're not the reason that, that you pretty much you can't, can't need we're a right to carry, carry in state. Yeah. I mean, anyone who applies for a permit from the York County Sheriff's Office will, will get it. Yeah. And it's not. Okay, it's not like Maryland where you apply and before you're dead, you may or may not. <laughs> so, I know state health that you're tired and you still get one. Before you but did. If, 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 like, personally, I have a concealed carry permit. Okay, all that means is that if I go to another state like Florida to visit my daughter, we're reciprocal and I can show them that and that gives me the right to carry in Florida. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just just, really just, just, just so you know, Florida is true. We're no longer reciprocal in Florida. Just so you know. Oh, come on. No, when did they do that? Last year or something. I just right. went online and it says trash. <laughs> You're going to Florida. <laughs> okay. Uh, did we already do our thing? We have, motion, have, we have a motion and we, we have a second from Inga. Uh, any for, discussion? For a non discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? My vote is aye. And this is 2021 20, something or other also. No. I'm going to take it from Washington. We're tabling the first row manual until next month? Right? Yeah, I think okay. so. Because right. uh, Kim's going to, Kim took an action to get back to us with an org chart that uh, meets uh, the requirements of uh, Borough County. And well, I think we were under the impression, too, that Andy um, had written that, and there were some questions, I think, that people had for him. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's fine. But he wasn't eating. Okay. So that'd be good next month. Okay. So I lost my... Okay. Oh, thank you. 
Okay, and we received an invitation to the uh, York County Boroughs Association. It's June 24th. It starts at 6.30. And it's at the uh, Picnic in the Park, York County Boroughs Association. And it's $15. Should we do, do I can just make copies of this? Do you have a copy yeah. of this? Everybody should have got yeah. it. Oh, okay. I then I'll just, I'll just oh, let citizen today it came across there that there's a planning commission meeting on Monday yeah. and that man and Parker is asking for a, a variance yeah. I was wondering what is that variance what is that about I hadn't heard anything come up in any meetings about man and Parker you'll have to come to the meeting it was just advertised this morning it'll be in the paper starting tomorrow that they're requesting five variances for a subdivision of the Man and Parker mm -hmm. parcel into three lots. This is for Phil oh, Rabbit. Yeah, I can. This, I, this is part of about a four part step. Yeah. This is for, um, I think Phil Robinson is doing a subdivision of the farm on Kirshner, and he wanted to have some um, commercial spaces in the front section. He's doing, um, it's really kind of cool. It's a, a Walden concept. I don't know if you're familiar with the, um, the city um, Mechanicsburg. <coughs> it's up by Mechanicsburg. Okay. It's basically, it's a, a village concept where the houses are all at right, pretty much at the street. You don't really have a front yard, so to speak. Um, you have some flower boxes. You have um, some, um, senior citizen housing, you have pizza shops and stuff right in your development, and the development actually owns the commercial spaces, and they decide who they want in there. Like if they really want a pizza shop, they might subsidize the pizza shop by giving them a lower rent. Uh, it's a neat concept. It's, uh, we actually went up and looked at the one up there because he brought it up, and it's, it's um, it's called a Walden concept. If you look it up, it's uh, it's really kind of cool. How many so, houses? I'm sorry. How many? How many houses? I, I, yeah, I don't. Over 140 don't, units. Yeah, I don't really. What? It's wow. over 140 units. Yeah, I don't. I don't even think we know that yet. But it is. Well, on the plan. Is that in New Freedom Borough? I mean, I saw yeah, the plan. Part of it's in New Freedom Borough. Part of it's in Shrewsbury Township. And the majority of the housing is in New Freedom Borough. The senior citizen housing will be in Shrewsbury Township. Very I mean, none of this has been approved. It has right. This is really now, does just. This, does this have to go to your county first? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then it well, comes no, no. Yeah. I think, I think oh, the like subdivision the part of it. Uh, you know, they're trying to set the stage for, the stage. you know, they want to be able to say, you know, we subdivided this property, we're going to take this part and use it for our commercial spaces. Okay. And so they're trying to put the plan together, but n in no way, shape, They're not even to that point yet. No, no. Okay. They even have, so they it's not going to be like we went through with yeah. Burkentine, where we thought we were okay to pass that and it hadn't even gone through your no, county well, planning yeah, commission was, and yeah, that, that was a that wasn't real cool but yeah no, well was, well no it wasn't I mean, no you know, but stuff happens it does we're new yeah i'll be way off the what we had we had no fault in that what's oh, yeah, yeah. So we're we way off on that. Yeah, they yeah, told us it went to your county planning, the, and I they was concerned. Yeah. So, I mean, it's like, be, it's yeah. really I, I was shocked when I was reading it yeah. Sunday. Yeah. I spent my Sunday yeah. trying to figure it out. I was up at 4 o'clock this morning. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's and the right. second one on there was the phase three final subdivision for Burkentine. I thought that had already been approved. Well, it yeah. had. That's what we were just. That's what we were just talking about. Yeah. They had come to. Uh, they had said that the plan had minor modification. They had been to York County Planning, and that the York County Planning said it was approved. So when they came back to us, we did not send it back through planning or anything because it had already been approved and they said it was a minor change. So, it, and in fact, the actual plan itself had been approved 12 years ago or something like that. So it wasn't really a big change. But it didn't so, have the It didn't have, it didn't have, it didn't have the, some That's of the requirements. Color. So what happened was we took back our approval and we said, no, you really actually have to go to your county planning and get it approved. So that's the process they went through. They went to your county planning and now they're coming back to our planning commission to get it reapproved. Okay, so both of those are going to be taken up Monday night. Yes. There's nothing else. I, we don't need an executive session, so I would entertain the motion. Motion to dismiss. Yes, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.